work. You know, last week we saw that with Olivet, and we'll see it um, this week with uh, Aurora and next week with Trine. So it's definitely by design to get us ready for our conference season. It would drive me crazy, Coach, because of the tough schedule you make. But later in the year, you could see that the last couple of years, how that developed you guys to be really, really tough at the end of the year, especially with the tough conference schedule. No doubt. Yep, I agree. And, that, and then, uh, yeah, and uh, we're looking to take the, the, the next step here today. I noticed that there was six players named at Franklin Player of the Week. Talk about those kids and how well they played last week. Yeah, you know, let's start um, with Bo Hess on defense. Uh, Bo Hess, uh, you know, is a guy that's played quite a bit for us over the last couple of years, and uh, he was all over the place uh, making plays last week with uh, TFLs and, and rushing the passer and uh, did a really good job. And then, uh, you know, we saw Malachi Joy in his first collegiate start uh, have some really impressive, uh, you know, yards after the catch, uh, making guys miss and, and was able to get in the end zone. So uh, really proud of him. And then Adam Gooth did a tremendous job punt for us and uh, averaged, I, I want to say, 47 or 48 yards a punt and had two inside the 10. So what, a, what an impressive day for, for him as well in his first collegiate start. You know, you look at those kids, and Coach, the, the, we're just going to get better and better and better. The fans have to stay because you, you're you pretty happy with the, the plan that you have put out this year. We just have to be very patient, and it will work out at the end of the year. Yeah, no doubt. You know, we had, you know, obviously guys that have played a lot of football for us, but we had some first-time starters and uh, was proud with how they handled that for the first time, and they need to build off of that. It was a great crowd. We expect more of that t- this week, don't we, Coach? We do. You know, it's uh, going to be a little cooler today than what it was last Saturday. So hopefully the that uh, helps uh, get some more fans out. And uh, what a great opportunity to see, uh, you know, one of the better uh, Division three programs in, in the Midwest here at Fought Stadium today. So I know that our, our fans would be excited to see them uh, and us uh, go at it today. How was practice this week, Coach? Are you pretty happy? Any injuries that we uh, are worried about or is everybody ready to go? Yeah, we we'll, you know we take it day by day, and uh, you know my my thing that I'm looking for from our team is improvement from last week, and uh, that's been the theme of the week is we need to improve, and uh, you know the focus is always on the Grizzlies, um, so uh, just looking at uh, just daily improvement, and then overall as a team. We're going to take a 60 second timeout when we come back. The coach will answer the question of the week. We'll be back after this 60 second timeout. When you need someone to fix your electrical issues, count on the experience of the professionals at Burner Electric Incorporated. We specialize in a variety of residential and commercial electrical services, including security and motion lights, emergency services, outdoor lighting, new construction, and more. Visit our website for more details. Burner Electric, 317-773-7663. That's Burner Electric. There's no greater anti-poverty measure than to give a person a job that helps them start to change that trajectory. Thousands of people get jobs here from all of these diverse backgrounds. We're helping write that story of that better future that we know they can get. We know that they deserve. Morales Group is a full-service staffing company that provides temporary labor uh, in the Indianapolis, Central Indiana market. Come talk to us. We would love to work with you. Back with the greatest show, Keith Myers, along with Coach. And, Coach, uh, here's the question of the week. Are you ready for this one? I am ready. We're going to make them as easy as possible, Coach. But a, a fan wanted to know, what got you into coaching and why are you coaching? Yeah, you know, uh, so going all the way back to high school, uh, you know, I was a three-sport um, athlete in football, basketball, baseball. And uh, you know, my coaches were some of my biggest uh, influences. And, uh, you know, I knew I always wanted to get into coaching, didn't know what sport it was going to be exactly. Uh, and then when I came here to, to Franklin, um, you know, I was a member of the football program and baseball program and then um, was not able to continue to, to my playing career here due to uh, an injury, uh, but got right into coaching. And uh, it's really all I've done ever since. I love sports and I uh, love all sports. And uh, football has been the, the path. Um, that I chose. And, uh, you know, I, I believe this is my uh, 20th year uh, in, in coaching. So um, it's uh, something that's very rewarding and, and love w- working with uh, this age group, 18 to 22 year old uh, young men. And we love working with you, coach. We appreciate it very much. If you have a question, you can send those questions to coach at Indiana SRN. Dot org. I will screen them and make sure that they are appropriate coach before I put them on the air. 
But I think it would be kind of neat to, to uh, pick your brain a little bit. The fans out there would like to get to know a little bit more of you. Uh, it's been a pleasure getting to know you as well. Yeah, no problem. Would, would love to answer as many uh, questions from the fans. No hate mail, Coach. I promise. I promise. <laughs> right. Yeah. The, the tailgate uh, was, uh, again, very good. Uh, the world record still stands at six hot dogs, Coach. Uh, I don't think uh, anyone can beat that. Troy has got that locked down. Uh, thanks to the Touchdown Club for taking care of us. And thank you for spending some time with us. We're looking for a win. No doubt. We, yeah, we are, too. I know the guys are hungry for one. And, uh, yeah, we're excited to get back out on the field today. Next week, uh, you are at Try, and we will not be with you next week. You you can catch that game on the Try uh, streaming. But uh, September 30th, that is homecoming, uh, Bluffton. I'm sure you're looking forward to Bluffton, but let's get this one done first, Coach. Yes, for sure. Let's take care of business today. That's the goal. All right. We'll see you uh, next time, Coach. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're listening to Indiana SRN, God's Word 24-7, and sports. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Foch Stadium on the campus of Franklin College for today's Heartland Collegiate Athletic Conference football game of the week. The Grizzlies hosting the Spartans of Aurora, ranked number 20 in the latest Division III football polls. Today's game brought to you in part by the Morales Group, building better futures one story at a time. Aspen Creek Grill, why go anywhere else for delicious food? Bertner Electric, providing quality electrical services in central Indiana. Boilermaker 374, we're second to none in quality and performance. Clean Slate, inspired innovation that moves business forward. And by Piper Logistics, from warehousing to transportation and everything in between. It's a cooler Saturday afternoon than what we had last week when temperatures were nearing 90 degrees and this afternoon we'll get maybe in the mid 70s should be a perfect day for football franklin coming back after that loss last week to olivet we'll talk about that game more in a couple of moments but a very good aurora team has made their way to the campus here at franklin college troy derangowski along with coach keith myers i know coach talked about in your pregame a little bit ago that you're going to play a very experienced team a team that has a lot of fifth-year players, so Franklin today will have their hands full with this uh, this very good Spartan team. Well, what else would you expect for Franklin, though? I mean, they, they play a very tough schedule, as we talked about before, that they play a very, very, very tough schedule, uh, preseason schedule. They, they, they pretty much enjoyed this, you know, yeah, and, yeah. and uh, th this will test you, see how well you play on the top 20 uh, uh, field and see how well they do. I think offensively they need to bounce back a little bit. Uh, big plays last week. I mean, I think like we counted seven big play, big plays last week. Never, nobody got in the red zone. Everything yeah. was just big plays. So we'll see how that develops today for the Grizzlies. You had plays. These are touchdown plays last week. 78, this is both teams. 78, 77, 51, 54, 65, 74, 64, 42. Sometimes you don't see that an entire year we got in one game. Yeah, and the crazy thing, when we talked about this on the way down here, if the offense mojo keeps going, that's what you want. Now yeah. your defense needs to step up, and now your defense cannot give up a 77-yard 
you know, a busted play to be a, to be a score. You you can't have that. Well, no doubt about it. Last week, Olivet had <laughs> a quarterback that uh, simply just had an outstanding day. And we're going to spotlight one of the players, in fact, two players right now for this Aurora team. One of them is their quarterback. So Franklin goes from one good quarterback to another dual threat. And Ian Luando is a guy that can hurt you in both the pass and the run. He's just that good. So far, three touchdowns, one sack, 105 yards rushing. So he can run the ball as well. Uh, he is a pocket protector quarterback. Gets outside the pocket. May not have the speed that we saw last week with Olivet, but we'll make we'll make a hurt if you're not going to guard him. Yeah. By the way, as you mentioned, 196 through the air last week and three touchdowns, 105 yards on the ground. Now he's got a running back. He's pretty good. I was watching him in warmups. He's real good. Yeah, Jaquay Creton at 5'10", 195. This guy may have not put up big numbers last week, but if you don't give him, if you, by the way, if you don't watch him real close, he's going to get you. Broad shoulders. So when he's hit in a hole, he's going to hit you before you hit him. Uh, can run, has good vision, uh, pretty impressive ball player. Well, their defense, good as well, because they only gave up 17 points last week. When you think about Jalen Jordan on that left side, along with Isaiah Parent, both guys are 275. <laughs> and then you got Otis Watts and Joel Koshton up front as well. Two guys that go about 220. So you got big and you got quickness on the defensive line. And you got strength. Yeah. They can, they can move some set, sleds. All right, let's talk about the Grizzlies. It was a, a game last week that they had an opportunity to win, and then again they gave up the big plays. This week they're hoping not to really think about what happened last week. It's kind of put that behind you, but it all starts with their quarterback, Kai Ross. He had good and he had bad last week. Four touchdown passes, but also four interceptions. And if you notice, he took him out last week set him down for eight or nine players, came back and really did much, much better. Four TDs on the year, not a bad kid. Got to give him time. I think you got to give him time. He played for Tri, Tri West. He's a strong kid. He'll be bounce, bounce back very well. Well, of course, Garrett Corey, you think about Garrett, another Tri West product, and he's a running back, but he ends up receiving the football so many times last week. He's the number two receiver now in the conference, number one in yards per reception at 30.3 at a great day. Here's what he did last week, 165-yard 160, all-purpose yards, scored three times, Oh, and he caught four passes for 121 yards. Uh, pretty good kid, and he also scored the touchdown at 44 yards. You know, the other player, Malachi Joy, had a great day as well. You'll be seeing a lot of him today, the junior at 5'8", 150. He had four receptions, 103 yards and two touchdowns. He averaged nearly 26 yards per reception as well. He is a very good ball player. I think the key today, special teams. And Franklin has a good one in Adam uh, Gun from uh, Santa Claus, Indiana. This kid punted the ball an average of 47 yards per punt and kept them out of, you know, really good field position could be the key of the game special teams yeah Guth as you mentioned averaging nearly 48 per punt last week when you talk about that Franklin defense you got two guys up front and we talk about Shea McGrath on one side you got Jaira Ojada on the other side those guys are so quick but then Bo Hess he didn't start last week right but you heard coach talk about him when he came into the ball game a very undersized linebacker but he was an impact player I I'm very impressed of those kids today and very much of the keys of the game today we're going to have those keys to the game coming up in just a couple of moments. And let me tell you what, if we have a game like we had last week, if you're not here this afternoon, you're going to miss a good one between Aurora and Franklin. I do like the idea, and when you talk about playing a tough schedule early at Olivet last week, you get Aurora this week. I always talk about those schedules. If it's not a good preseason schedule, you don't have to play two weeks in a row against somebody in the top ten. But it ends up being fool's gold if you play somebody that isn't very good you beat them, and then you get into conference play. It's not the same. Well, you, you go from these two teams, and, and then you got to go to Trine. Come yeah. on. I'm yeah. Troy, let's go. I mean, uh, pretty good teams in Division Three. Yeah, first three games would be a huge test. Now, last week in the conference, Hanover beat center 10-7. Trine was a win over Anderson 61 to nothing. DePaul beat Rose 
33-21. Manchester got shut out by North Park, 27-0. You saw that Olivet Franklin score, 35-32. Mount St. Joe in a shootout against Baldwin Wallace. They win that one, 46-33. And Defiance losing their opener to Mount Union, 45-6. Keith, what are some of the games we're going to see around the uh, conference the today? conference today, Hanover versus University of Olivet. Mount St. Joseph has taken on uh, Orlam, uh, Harlem. Uh, Defiance takes on Andrean. Rose Holman is at Trine. Manchester is at uh, 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 Manchester is at home against Alabama. We have that game for you. Anderson and DePaul and Bluffton takes on Aberdeen. All right, let's take a look at the starters, if we may. Let's start first off with Aurora on offense. You're going to see the familiar names. We mentioned Luando, who again last week had that three-touchdown day. He can run the football and then uh, Creighton. But, you know, that offensive line, look at those guys up front. You have Anthony Salas at left tackle. He's 270. Matt Kickle is at 300. Then you go on the other side. You have Jalen Cole at 320. Warner, 265. And your center's 260. Those guys up front are big and physical. And I saw Peterson down on the floor field today. Uh, he makes two of us. Yeah, big, he's a, big he's guy. A big guy. And then, of course, when you think about those guys on the outside, Robert Cooper, Michael Boland, Trey Madsen, and, and Ty Pruitt, four very, very good receivers with Cooper being the tight end. Let's take a look at that defense now for Aurora. We mentioned earlier Jalen Jordan on the outside, Isaiah Perrin, two guys that are very good up front, but those linebackers coach, they're very good as well. They are very good. You can't get sucked in. If you get sucked in, I think there's going to be big time yardage here. And then you got Peterson, Nordmeyer, Ramirez, and Smith as the defensive backs. Now let's take a look at that Franklin offense. Again, you talk about the leader on this team, Kai Ross. He's got so many weapons in the outside. We mentioned Malachi Joy, Garrett Core coming out of the backfield, but they made one change in that offensive front. Brock Beach is not starting today. It'll be Amari Phillips who'll get the start, the sophomore, at right tackle. So that's the one change they have there. Going to be very interesting. Stay with us. We will take a timeout. When we come back, we'll run down that Franklin defense coming up in just a few moments. This is college football right here on HCAC-TV. Back once again, and uh, welcome to college football on this Saturday afternoon. We want to get to that Franklin defense, take a look at their starters in this one here this afternoon. As we mentioned, you got two really good defensive ends. Bo Hess had a great game last week, but those defensive backs are tough as well. Four guys that are very quality. Demarion Newell had a nice game, as did Andre Harlan last week. I like Newell. I think Newell is the key of this defense today. All right, let's get to Keith's keys last week. We didn't keep score last week. We may have to go back and look at the previews. See how you I did looked, there. I did my, uh, did my homework this week. Oh, you I did? I was 100%. Oh, okay. Very yeah, good. I'm glad to hear look that. look at the keys, keys. And they're brought to you by, you ready for this? Yes. Morales Group. Uh, for Aurora, the Spartans, they have to have a fast start. Take the 12th man out of the game. If they can take this crowd out of the game, that's good for them. They need score touchdowns. And, the, 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 and Coach Beebe says, we need to score touchdowns. We don't need field goals. Yeah. Phil goes will lose you, Kenny, because we need to score touchdowns. Okay, Coach, whatever you say. For Franklin, uh, it, it's the same thing. I think it, it's very important because if they get this done, I think this is this team could get this done. Limit the big plays on the, on the offensive side of the ball. they got to play good defense. So 
play great defense. Control the line of scrimmage. They didn't do that last week. Uh, and once you touch somebody, wrap them and take them over. And then they have to eliminate the turnovers. A lot of turnovers late in the game. And two big scoring dr drives that uh, Olivet had last week were busted plays. Yeah. Where they had him behind the line of scrimmage, and the quarterback just wouldn't got it. As uh, There's the keys of the game. Thank you for Morales Group for sponsoring that for us this week. All right, let's go ahead and find out our officials for today's game, and I want you to be very nice <laughs> to all of them because I know you know most of them very well, but really be nice to the last one on your list. Hey, okay? we broke bread with these guys, so it, 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 this is really nice. And, and we talked war stories, and I never had ever heard the story, Troy, and I will never – reveal that story that they told me about you. <laughs> uh, the referee, Jim Lido, is our referee. Ch uh, Harsman, good guy, is the umpire. Brian Cornell is the head linesman. James Payne is the safety uh, official. Tim Kraft is the head linesman. Derek C Cole is the field back judge. And Matt Alexandra. Alexander, yes. I said that right. Yes. The hometown boy uh, is uh, the back judge. Hometown boy in your neck My of the neck woods. My neck of the woods, yeah. yes. Alexander family, a great family over there in Centerville, and it's good to see him. He was here last week. He texted me, didn't know I was doing the game, and then I, we got together a little bit through the texting portal and had a chance to talk to him a little bit what earlier What I today. love about Jim and his crew, and he said this, and you, and you were down there hearing it, we are going to expedite this, this game. It's all about rhythm, and if we can get in a rhythm, we get the teams in the rhythm, Kids play better when we set a tone, and his crew really does a nice job of keeping the game moving. Well, you see the officials. You might see the officials. They're meeting at midfield. We're ready to get this one underway. Franklin. How about those gold jerseys? I love them. Woo! And you can see the numbers I and know. everything, even on Aurora. Yeah, Coach, keep wearing those gold, baby. Jackson, one of the two players deep, along with Matino now for Aurora. They're going to get the football first so that Franklin defense is going to get tested here in this opening drive. And we'll see again one of the best quarterbacks in Luando. And, and I was watching him during the warm-ups. Strong arm. Yeah. Just look. I mean, he looks like a quarterback to me. You know, when we go down there and we get, to, we get here about an hour and 15, hour and a half before game time, and you talk to the kids and, you know, this is this a fun, this is kids playing in sandbox. Yeah, they just have a smile on their face, ready to go. Have a good ball game. Let's go. All right, pure football, Division Three football here in HCAC TV, powered by Indiana SRN. Matino inside the five. We are underway. Across the ten, the fifteen, looking for blockers. There's a flag down. This may come back. He got a block in the back, right at about the 20, 20 yard line. A lot of times you see that early in a in a football game, especially on special teams. We saw that even a little bit last week. Guys end up getting a little bit anxious on that opening kick. So if it moves Aurora back, they're going to start deep in their own territory in their first offensive possession. You know, my old football coach told me, if you see the guy's number in the back, that doesn't mean you hit him. Yeah, get your hands away. And But the, my excuse was, Coach, that's the only time I get to hit anybody. <laughs> that's the only time you got to play, yeah. Well, if, I, if they don't see me, then they don't know who hit him. <laughs> Problem was, most of the time they had to find you over there on the bench, and that was not. Well, I was yeah. guarding the water and tackled anybody near it. You did a great job, I too. did. I got a college scholarship for that. Football at the nine-yard line. Lawando has three receivers to the near side. First play from scrimmage, handoff. It'll be Creighton. Creighton, big hole, 35, 40, and he's gone. He's got one man to beat. 35, 30, cutback, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown. First play from scrimmage, and Franklin gives up the big play. Well, there's one of my keys going. Wow. And he was off to the races. 91 yards and the score for Jaquan Creighton. And we just talked about him a little bit ago, how elusive he is. And once he made that cut, he was off to the races. Wow. Extra point attempt. Austin Wellguess. And the kick is on the way, and it is good. They actually say it's going to be number 92. That's going to be Matthew Heilick. 
out of Hulbert, Indiana. And just like that, lightning strikes first here at Franklin. Aurora leads it 7-0. At Morales Group Staffing, we are all about building better futures. And during these times, we are working hard to put people to work. We are now hiring for hundreds of jobs with pay up to $17 an hour. Visit our website at moralesgroup.net or text JOBS, J-O-B-S, to 317-472-7600 to apply now and get hired today. We encourage you to follow us on Twitter, at IndianaSRN. Find upcoming games, video highlights, and much more. Follow us now, at IndianaSRN. Coach, there's nothing like putting your, first off, the pressure back on your offense now. They have to perform extremely well. We knew that coming in, but boy, first play from the line of scrimmage. Franklin's got to be just wondering, what are we seeing here in all these great players? You know, and... You know, we talked about not giving up the big play and contain, and the containment fell fell apart here. But, you know, it's early. There's lots of time left here. All right, here's the kick. That's going to sail into the end zone and a touchback, and we'll see Franklin get the football. Kai Ross, four touchdowns last week, four interceptions, the 5'10", 190-pound junior. He'll be featured in the backfield along with Garrett Cora. We mentioned Cora earlier, four receptions, 121 yards last week, averaged over 30 yards per reception. But I think they got to run the football better today. I, I agree, Troy. I think if they ran the ball, time possession, you know, if you keep the ball away from your opponent, they can't score. Yep. By the way, the entire conference, nobody last week rushed over 100 yards in the opening games of the season. Cora gets the call. A little extra effort there. We'll get him an extra yard or so. Big 99, Jalen Jordan, six foot, 275 to make the stop. I like Cora because he hit the hole and he kept his feet moving. Got about three, maybe four, six, uh, second and six. And they'll quickly get to the line of scrimmage. Want to keep that defense off balance if they can. Four-man front there for Aurora. Second down. Cora gets the call again, gets hit immediately, and he's going to get dropped. He might get back to the line of scrimmage. The first one to get him was Marcellus roaming on the outside. The linebacker got in there very quickly. Look like the old crossbutt play. Now just like this, it's third down and long. We saw Franklin last week. They had some big play opportunities as well as did Olivet. A little different defense this time against Aurora. They'll look to throw. Downfield ball caught at the 42-yard line. That's going to be good enough for a first down on the reception. That's Dylan McKinney, the senior at 6'1", 180. Yeah, McKinney went to the post, got it, caught the ball, surrounded the ball. Nice play. Good third down procedure. Yeah, yeah, third and long. They get it out to the 42-yard line. Four receivers now for Kai Ross. He'll look to throw to the sideline. It's going to be out of bounds. It's Dylan McKinney again, but this time he can't stay in bounds. It'll be second down and 10. Want to remind you, keep up to date with all of our schools in the conference, every sport. It is a busy, busy Saturday in the HCAC. You can do so by going to the HCAC website, heartlandconference.org. They'll keep you updated on the live scores, live stats of this game, and all the football games going on in the conference today. Ross to throw. Has a man. Caught. 32. He could score. 15, 10, 5 touchdown. Dylan McKinney again. How about that good play? Nice. Well, now you feel a little bit better because now you're one point away. You know, I am beginning to believe that all we're going to see this year in Franklin football is just big touchdown plays. <laughs> 70 yards, 60 yards, 50 yards, 60 yards. <laughs> Coach, take another look at it. Plenty of protection. Look how he caught the ball. And, you know, a couple years ago, you got to be honest, he would have got tackled. Yeah. The strength and conditioning that this program has done over the last couple of years have been awesome. Extra point is good by Gabe Crutchfield, and we have more electricity going on. We're tied at seven.
This is Brittany. A little thing I love about the egg white grill is the toasty English muffin. It's toasted perfectly. It's just a little crispy, but not like hard crispy, but just crispy enough that when you bite into it, everything is perfect. <laughs> My name is Curtis, and I love the egg white grill because the egg itself, it's like soft and fluffy, like a pillow. I, and I, and I, I would eat my pillow, but I'd eat <laughs> the, the Chick-fil-A breakfast egg white sandwich for sure. They say nice guys don't finish first. So maybe it's time to reconsider what it means to be first. It's about being your best, but knowing you could be even better. It's being present. Well, respectful of history. You sure you want to make that move? It's donating something more valuable than money. It's believing in yourself. It's something bigger. It's coming from different families. We're treating each other like brothers. It's not just being a man. It's being a mason. Well, each team with a touchdown early in this one. Right now, looks like it might be a shootout. It'll be a short kick returned from the 10-yard line. That'll be Jackson. He's brought down immediately at around the 16-yard line. Good special teams play there for Franklin. Did you notice Jackson? He was actually getting held all the way down and was just fighting off the, the defender made the play. So it'll be the second possession. Luando. Had an easy time with Creighton scoring that 91-yard touchdown run in their first possession. So this Franklin defense, see what adjustments they're going to make. Last week, Kai Ross, 20 of 36 for 301 yards and four touchdowns. He's got a touchdown already today. Luando now has four touchdowns in his first two games. He pumps, has plenty of time, airs it out to the sideline, has a man, and is it caught? Yes. No, Great catch, no, no, did he no. drop it? No, they they're going to say he did drop it. Back That's intended there. Yeah, back judge saw the bounce, and then he sold it well, though. Yeah, Connor Bright, the intended That's receiver. Here we go. Connor Bright, the intended target. This is where I think he drops it right there. But boy, did he sell that one. Woo. So it'll be second down. Trips near side, hash mark left. Luando will now throw out here in the flat. Ball's going to be caught one handed and hauling it in. Great catch. That'll be Trey Madsen, 5'10", 185. He's a fifth-year player. He probably would want that ball back because if you see that ball, it looked like a duck. But he, it, it uh, did what it needed to do first down. Football will be placed at the 26-yard line. Aurora, number 20 in the latest Division three poll. Saw what they could do last week with this offense, and we also saw in the first play from the line of scrimmage. Luando to throw, has time, steps up, oh. takes it himself, got a big hit right there at about the 33-yard line. Is that Peyton? Wow, what a hit. Second down. Look at this. Head-on collision line. there. You get hit like that a couple of times, you don't want to do that anymore. No. Two receivers split even to each side. Luando to throw again over the middle and in and out of the hands of the intended receiver, Connor Bright, at about the 40-yard line. It'll be third down and long. Well, here we go. First third down and long here for Aurora. Ty uh, Pruitt, one of the receivers to the near side. This crowd is in this game. Sure, this is exactly what you want. And they'll get to work between the hash marks. Three-man front for Franklin, and we've got a whistle and a timeout called by Aurora. First time out of the ball game, 11.32 to go on the first. We're tied at seven.
can't get to a computer? Then we've got you covered. Just go to the Indiana SRN app and stay up to date with all of your favorite teams. You can watch live coverage or relive the experience with our on-demand service. Creighton will get the call, 35, first down near the 40 after the timeout. Aurora coming back and using the very talented running back at 5'10", 185. He's another fifth-year player for Aurora. A uh, little bit of talking down there it's after the tackle. Pruitt coming back in. He'll be the lone receiver split wide to the left, trips to the near side, including Connor Bright, who they've targeted a couple of times here in the opening period of play. Creighton will stand as the lone setback. First down and 10. Creighton gets the call. Look at him change direction to the outside. Cuts back 40, 45, 50, and into Franklin territory down to about the 47. Pretty impressive moves that he could stop on a dime and just make that feet moving, keep those feet moving. Well, you got to watch the hips, right? You got to watch the hips. You watch the hips. Watch the hips. Unfortunately, his are moving a little bit quicker my hip would be out of joint right now. It would. Okay. And, and boy, give credit to that offensive line, as no we had mentioned. They're big, and they're moving people off the defensive line on the other side. First down and 10. Trips left. Play action pass. Luoda, there's a hold. The throw downfield, and it's going to be caught inside the 10-yard line. And the player, Pruitt, losing his hat, but I think we're coming back the hold. Way back at the 46-yard line. May have gotten Troy Warner. At least they were looking at Warner, number 59. Get the initial call here. You know how I knew it was 59? Because he was looking at the official like, hey, come on. Man. Hey, what did they do? Here we go. There's the whole, whoop. yeah. Oh, just a little one. Uh, yeah. Well, I'd hold a lot, too, if I had to go against Jairo Jada on that uh, left side because he's so darn quick. It's going to be a heck of a challenge for Warner this afternoon. First down and 20. They have to get to the 37-yard line. And once again, trips left. They'll work on the hash mark near side. Play action and holding on to it is Luando up the sideline, 40, 35, 30. It's a foot race again, finally brought down, but he gets to the 13-yard line. Another big run against this Franklin defense. I'll tell you what, they just blew him off the ball. Well, everybody was playing the run with Creighton, and the next thing you know, he takes off. Yeah, nice little ball here. Hides that ball real well. Here's the key block right there. That's a nice block. So Luando in the red zone. Football will be placed at the 13-yard line. Aurora about to score on their second possession. Luando throws to the end zone. Touchdown. And just like that, Trey Madsen hauls that one in. The fifth-year senior, fifth-year player, I should say, at 5'10", 185, and a great throw by Luando. He made that look pretty easy. Yeah, it did look easy. You know, I was watching Luando that time, and he's just really calm in the pocket. There you see the reception. But and he threw that between two players of Franklin. So now the extra point. Trying to make this a 14-7 contest. The kick is on the way. It is good. 9.41 to go. Opening period, 14-7 Aurora. Calling officials cheaters or corrupt? It's not a game. Insulting referees. It's not a game. Threatening officials, it's not a game. Berating young umpires, learning the ropes, it's not a game. Violent language in the stands, it's not a game. Verbal abuse from the sideline, it's not a game. Screaming at a referee in the parking lot, it's not a game.
back here at Franklin College. By the way, you can maximize your vis visibility of your business, gain prominent exposure through on-site branding, social media mentions, and more. Contact coach at indianasrn.org. Another kick will sail into the end zone, another touchback, so we'll see Franklin start their offense again at the 35-yard line. Well, we just picked up where we left off. I saw where the ball went into the end zone. Little boy there in the gray shirt. See him over there, Trey? Yeah. He grabs the ball and throws it back to the official. The official goes, and he goes, Thank gives him that thumbs up. He's got a great seat. Look at where his seat is. I'd take that seat. Yeah, no kidding. Misspoke. It's actually 25-yard line, not the 35. It'll be first down. <laughs> Franklin would like They'll to take have the it on 35, the 35. Yeah. Ross, once again. Will pitch, and around near side. That'll be McKinney again. Tripped up, he'll get to the 30. Dylan McKinney, the ball carrier. Nice crowd on hand here at Franklin College. Well, I'll tell you what, it's much more comfortable today. Oh, man. 92 last week. It was brutal. Tad warm. Second down and about five. Ross has core as the lone setback. Ross will over the middle and wide open and dropping the football for Franklin College. That was Matt Neely, the tight end out of North Harrison High School. You know what he was doing before he caught the ball, right? Running yeah. upfield. Yep. So third down and five. Always got to look that ball in and then let everything else play itself out. See four wideouts in the ball game now for Ross. Here comes the rush up the middle, throws near side, incomplete. Nice defense by 35. That was intended for number 28, Hunter Hatfield out of South That's Dearborn, Indiana. And after that explosive first Hunter possession in which they got the touchdown pass to Dylan McKinney, they'll have to punt the football away. Adam Deuce out to punt. Looks like James Matino is James deep Martino, for Aurora. You can see, and I know Franklin, we talk about their speed on the outside is something that they really need to work on when it comes to the defensive side of the football. But when you look at Aurora, you can see why they're in the top 20. And they made a deep run in the NCAA tournament last year. Matino to the outside will be hog tied and brought down at around the 38-yard line. Another great punt. Uh, he had, had nice hang time. I thought they were going to overrun the, the coverage, but did a nice job. You know, overall, you mentioned special teams. Last week, I thought Franklin did a pretty good job in special, special teams. Special team wise, yeah. yeah. So now the defense back out. Ilawando, a touchdown pass already today after that run by Creighton for the 91 yard score. You count the score, two scores we've seen today. We're at 10, double digits, and everything touchdown-wise, 40 yards and more. Run over the left side across the 40. Nice play there by Creighton just to get the extra yardage to about the 44. You know, we keep this up. We, by the end of the year, we might get to like 90 different <laughs> plays that are over 40 yards. We should keep count. Well, I am. Okay. We're at 10 now, so okay. All right. I guarantee we're going to keep a running score on that. Trips near side, hash mark left. Franklin this time with a four-man front. They were at a three-man front moments ago. Luando checking at the line of I scrimmage. I think he just changed the play, Troy. He's got six on the play clock. Going to give it. Nope, he's going to keep it himself. Luando to the outside. First down, slides into Franklin territory, got it by about three yards. I think he saw the alignment of Franklin and changed the play from the line of scrimmage. And I, I think that was just a design quarterback draw. Well, that's two in a row now where the Franklin defense really focusing on Creighton. Creighton goes to the right, quarterback goes to the left and got a nice gain for the first down. Slid about an extra six yards, but they only gave him where he touched down. So it'll be first down. Looking to throw, Luando has a man near side in and out of the hands of the intended receiver at about the 20. Good job defensively there for Franklin College. 
Servi's there, Drew Servi's the linebacker. He, now he's undersized as well at about 180, but good on pass coverage. But he churned, that's not going to be a penalty because he churned his head. Watch him churn his head right. Well, he didn't turn his head, did he? He did not. <laughs> well, maybe he should have been. Second down. Four wideouts now <laughs> for Luando. I tried to sell it, Troy. You did. You did a great job. Luando, here they come. Breaks a tackle there. Trying to get back to the line of scrimmage. Now shuffles the pass ahead, and it's caught for a first down. How about that play, and how about the catch right there by Trey Madsen? You're not going to believe this shovel pass. The, what I don't, what is crazy here is all the wide receivers are yelling. Look at this guy right there. He's yelling at him. I'm here, I'm here. Yeah. Give me the ball. <laughs> <laughs> well, he wanted to go a little further down. My field. goodness, how about a catch? You know, what about Luando just in the presence of shoveling that pass ahead? First down here for Aurora. Coach B would tell you that's how they drew it up in practice. Yeah. Over the middle, that pass was a bullet. Madsen couldn't hold on to it. That ball needed to be a bullet. Almost looked like Lawando that time was mad at Madsen. Take that. You know. Here, if you want to catch a ball. <laughs> I got one for you. Players don't get mad at each other. No, no. Never. Well, he shouldn't be mad at Madsen because Madsen... Also got him a touchdown reception. Yes, sir. Trips near side. Second down and 10. Luando looking this side. Throws. Ball caught. First down down to the 20-yard line. This time it'll be Ty Pruitt. You, know, you look at Madsen, you look at Pruitt, two guys that are just really sure-handed type players. And has played with each other long enough that they know each other yeah and it is a lot about timing a yes. lot about feel as a quarterback and a receiver and they go through this even in the off season working on these routes getting to know where they're going to be so Creighton again the lone setback you see Robert Cooper the tight end set up to the left here comes blitz. the blitz Handoff, trying to get to the outside. Creighton does. He's down to the 10, the 5. Sideline, did he stay in? And yes, touchdown for Creighton, his second of the day. Great balance there on the sideline. And Aurora has opened up a 20-7 to lead over Franklin. 20-yard run. Well, I think Creighton showing us he's a little bit better than what we thought coming in. I mean, look at that balance just to stay in bounds. How about the blocking downfield? Mm. So now the extra point attempt here is Heilick. So far a busy day for the right-footed kicker. The kick is on the way in good. 6.13 to go. Opening period 21-7 Aurora. going on today in the conference one of the busier Saturdays that you will have here's a deep kick again that's now three where Franklin has not had a chance to make a return yet so well, Kai Ross back out once again start at the 25 yard line as we look forward to see what the Grizzly has in store for you today I want to remind you the Commissioner's Cup is a rotating trophy awarded to the institution that garners the most overall all-sports points. I want to congratulate Rose Hallman again, the winner last year of the Commissioner Cup. You know, we should have a, a Commissioner Cup for the broadcasters' team. We since, should. Since we're doing three games a, a week. Quick throw, ball caught across the 30, out to about the 32 on the reception. That's Malachi Joy. Had a big game last week for the Grizzlies. The HCACTV.TV network is doing exactly what it needs to be done, and we're glad we're a member of it. Exactly. Second down after gain of seven. Hello, Jay Jones. There, I have to say that once a week. <laughs> Change to play it. Yeah, they always see something with the coaches upstairs that they might be able to exploit. Here's Cora over the right side. Big hole. 45. Here we go again. 40, 30, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown. My goodness. 
68 yards and a score. There's 11 plays in the two games we have done, 40 plus yards for a touchdown. Well, Troy, it could be a long day because we're not going to get through the first quarter. <laughs> oh, wow. Here we go. Watch it. Look at this hole. That hole opened up, and here's where he saw it. It's right there. I mean, they are chasing it. This guy, another five yards, I think maybe they could have caught him. Well, they had to come a long way to get him. The extra point good. is on the way. It is good. We have fireworks again. 529, opening period. We have a combined 35 points. From warehousing to transportation and everything in between, Piper Logistics does it all. Centrally located, Piper Logistics has two warehouses in Indianapolis and a warehouse in Cincinnati, Ohio. Piper Logistics houses over 1 million square feet. Along with our transportation department, we can provide service to half the United States markets. We encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Indiana SRN. Hit the bell to get notifications for upcoming games and more. Watch as many games as you want, as many times as you want. Coach, as much fun as it is as a broadcaster, and I know you're enjoying this, if people could see you now. Jump! Jump. That's one of the songs you play in church. Yeah. is you rarely see. We're up to 11 <laughs> plays now in two games, in two games. a 40-plus big play touchdown. We got you know, you know what you do is call ESPN and say, watch the ACAC. Yeah. Kick will be returned here by Matino once again. Looks for the cutback across the 20. Now to the outside. Look out. Good cutback again. Oh, He's going to get fake. extra yardage to the 32. How about juke me to the left, juke me to the right, and then I'll wrap you around and knock you down on the ground. These guys must be great dancers, too. I mean, they just shuck and jive all the way down the field. You know, true story, I had a high school coach that taught ballet for his football players. Really? Yes, sir. Good balance, yes. Yes, sir. Coach Dick Hall Harpole back in the day. All right, here's Luando. I don't have enough room in my score sheet if we keep going. Like yeah, this. you're going to get need to get some more paper. So far for Aurora, three possessions and three scores. They'll start this drive at the 32. Lawando to throw again underneath the defense. Ball caught 35. There's one thing you got to do. You got to wrap these guys up. Trey Madsen. Got about three or four extra yards. Franklin's defense on the outside needs to do a better job. Demarion Newell had him and couldn't hold on. Well, let me ask you a question. You can be analyst here for a second. If you pursue that, is it just because your momentum has carried you so much that you can't, ha you don't have enough time to wrap? Is that one of the I, reasons why that is like that? I, that could be. I, I just think bottom line, it, tackling probably isn't what it used to be, but you got to really wrap up now. Well, because everybody's really strong. And you'd probably don't get as many reps in practice. Luando keeps it himself. Got by another defender. Uh-oh, 40, 30, and he gets out of bounds at the 25. As he was ready to break our streak, we would have had 12 right there. Well, all I know is the best call of the day so far is, uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> I couldn't believe we were about ready to see it again. Your eyes got big. Look at this. I mean, here's, here's where he made the stop right there. And then look at this block here. Yeah. That great is block. great blocking downfield. Uh-oh. Wow. Three, yep. So far, when you see Aurora, I mean, they have done a great job just one way back to the other side, and they've just been – that one thing about it, they're tough to tackle. First down for Aurora. Here's Creighton near side. 15, 10, 5 touchdown. That one doesn't count. It was only 25 yards. Oh, okay. His, what, second touchdown? His third touchdown of the day. 27 points already in the opening quarter for Aurora. This Franklin defense just has no answer for them right now. Uh, not at this time. Look at this. Look at the explosion. How about that Look block? That. How about that block? Wow. See you down in the end zone. So now the extra point attempt. 
Kicker's going to get tired by the end of the first half. The that extra is in the point street. He is good. 3.56 to go. 28-14 Aurora. Have you uh, you seen enough yet? No, no, I got I got I got more points than me. Okay, I think you're going to get more. You points. know, maybe we should do a feature and spin the wheel to see how many points we're going to have combined by the end of the day. Kind of like the price is right at the end where yeah. you spin the big wheel. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, Franklin will get it back. I tell you what, though, 28 points given up in this opening quarter. As that one sails into the end zone again, looks like at least at this stage, there's barely any wind blowing, and that kicker's sending it into the end zone. But now you got to regroup again. Again, we're back to that same thing. Don't panic, but now you got to think to your defense at some point. They've got to get some stops. Well, I think our crowd has expanded because there are more people in the end zone than we started with today. Well, because that's where everything's play being played I, I guess in the so. end zone. Some crazy, crazy numbers here to begin this one. We'll give you, by, by the way, already Aurora, 258 yards rushing. Here's Cora, swarmed under, still on his feet, and then takes a hard hit. They're going to lose about, what, a yard on that once they reset. Ramirez on the tackle, and it was not a soft tackle. It was a pretty heavy hitting. We'll check here real quick. We're talking about already 304 yards of offense for Aurora, and we're still in the first quarter, by the way. Did you say 304? 304. Whew. Franklin's not bad. They're at 154. I'd take yeah, that every could, quarter. Yeah, you can win games that way. Man in motion is right. Cora back up the middle. It'll be well shy of a first down. It'll be third down long near the 28-yard line. I can guarantee in the, what, nearly 40 years I've been doing this, I've not been through two games where I've seen 11 touchdowns of 40 or more yards. You got another 40 years in you, don't you? I hope so. I hope so, too. I'll be right there with you, Brad. You know, I'm just hoping one day that, like Chuck and myself and the other guys, get our face on that uh, web page that <laughs> has all the profiles that guys have been gone for 18 years. Here's Ross going to take it himself. Going to cut the edge and gets the first down as he goes out of bounds here in the near side. I feel more bad about Chuck not being on there because, you know, he was in Evansville last night, makes the drive up here. He just wants a little love is all he wants. It's just not going to give me anything for a <laughs> at all. This is a nice little run here. Look at this run. Turns Great to the run. corner. The yep. The star of the game, though, these players and the fans that support us. Yep, that's the star of the game. Well, it's it's the purest of football. When you think anything that you see below, really, Division One, and these guys are here to play, because this is about it for most of them. The four years they'll play college football as Cora gets the run to the 41. And then they take on their real life. You know, Cora was the last one out of that pile, but he was the only one that stood up. Everybody else was down on the ground. Core's a good bat, durable. Well, we talked to him. He's only 175 pounds, but he junior. runs like he's Correct. about 200. Yeah, he's a junior. Try West grad. Yep. There is, by the way, with it being a Saturday, I saw a lot of recruits here on oh. campus. Yeah. Good to see that. Second down at about four. Ross again to throw, has a man near side in and out of his hands and dropped. That will go incomplete, pass intended there for number six, Derek Thompson out of Brownstown Central. 
you know, always hate to have a drop, and of course it wouldn't have gained a whole lot. But now you're talking about third down. You have to get to the 45. Third down for the grid. Really puts you in a tough situation here. Ross, RPO. Now he throws, has his man at the sideline. Good enough for another first down, and there is Spencer Wright. I like that curl because Spencer went to the to the chain, came back, and he came back to the ball, but gave him six, seven yards of flex time just in case something has occurred. That's a nice play. That's one thing, one thing about the RPO, though, is you have an opportunity. If that defense doesn't come get you, and those defensive backs have to stay on those receivers, you have running room. Yeah, 15, 20 yards. Yeah. As we're underneath a minute to play. First down, football again at the 48-yard line. Ross will give it to Core. Bounce to the outside, and if he beats that man, he has a big gain, but a great tackle made by Roaming once again, the linebacker. I don't know if they'll wait and run this out. I would. Actually, Romeus, excuse me. Yes, sir. Number 13. Yeah, they're going to run this out. Yeah, five seconds to go, and we will head to the second quarter. After one, Aurora 28, Franklin 14. And that's the first quarter. They say if you like offense, you've got it today. In the first quarter alone, combined 485 yards of total offense. How many yards? 485. So now Franklin second down and nine. Yard line. Two receivers split to the near side. They're working between the hash marks. Here's Jennings in the ball game, trying to cut the edge, and he went down. Great play on the pursuit Nordmeyer defensively. Nordmeyer, Connor Nordmeyer, coming up, the fifth-year player at six foot one ninety-five. So now another big third and long. They have to get to the 42-yard line. Trips near side, single receiver split wide left. That's McKinney. Ross looking this way. Ball caught, first down. Inside the 45, down to about the 41-yard line. See where they spot the football. That's going to be Hunter Hatfield out of South Dearborn on the reception. We'll put the football at the 41. Our buddy Bill Ludlow is on assignment down at Butler tonight. And Butler leads Taylor at the end of the first quarter by the score of 17-7. I don't think we have a, a Butler grad in our press box. We have we? a couple. First down. Once again, Jennings bouncing to the outside. 35-30. Gets hit hard and then finally brought down at around the 24-yard line. Nice run by Jennings. McKinney did a nice job of making a block down field to get him that extra five or six yards. Look at this block here. Turn here. There you go. That's a nice block. And he ran right into the back of McKinney. Those are always scary when you have guys run in your, in your back legs. So now Franklin on the move. 
First down at the 29-yard line, trips left. Jennings staying in for Cora. They'll throw over the middle, ball caught, and then dropped at the 14-yard line. Malachi Joy once again on the reception. And another, and another first down. First down. Well, it appears, and I'm not the smartest guy in the world, we're going to have a shootout. <laughs> in the red zone. Football be placed again at the 13-yard line. Ross oh, to there. throw he's again. Open. He's open. And to the corner oh. and just out of the reach of his intended receiver, Malachi Joy. They did not pick him up until he crossed that route. He had plenty of protection there, Troy. Actually, that pass was intended there for the tight end Derek Thompson out of Brownstown Central. So that falls incomplete. It'll be second down. Crowd got really well, he, quiet here, didn't they? Yeah, he's asking for another play. He, I don't think he, he shook that one off. No, I don't think that one would work, Coach. McKinney split wide to the left, timeout. Hatfield wide to the left, and Franklin has to call a timeout. Could not get their signals all together on that offensive play. 12.34 to go. 28-14, Aurora. You're good at making big announcements. We're good at your insurance. Start with Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, online, over the phone, or in person, and stop knocking on wood. We encourage you to follow us on Twitter, at IndianaSRN. Find upcoming games, video highlights, and much more. Follow us now, at IndianaSRN. We encourage you to follow us on Twitter, at IndianaSRN. Find up... Following the quick timeout, second down here for the Grizzlies, trying to get into the end zone for the third time here this afternoon. Handoff, and not much there this time for Channings. Malachi Joy will come back in. Also returning to the lineup will be Derek Thompson, so you're third and long, and certain, certainly a passing situation here for Franklin. Here's another one of these situations you get into the red zone. You need some points. Yeah. Even if it's just three. So here we go. Third and long. Here comes blitz. the blitz. Gets rid of it in time, and it's incomplete yeah, intended incomplete. for McKinney across the middle. Cannot complete the pass, and so here comes the field goal unit on. Now, we saw him warming up today. He nailed a couple from 35. Well, he's uh, he's got a heck of an a heck of a leg there when you talk about Gabe Crutchfield. Gabe Crutchfield on the field to attempt the field goal. Crutchfield out of Franklin over. Central. He is a senior. Good news, he's got it right between the hash marks. The kick is up and it is good. 11:56 to go before halftime. 28-17, Aurora. Your hauling or moving project has arrived, and College Hunks Hauling Junk and Moving has you covered. Honest. Uniform. Nice. Knowledgeable. Service. College Hunks Hauling Junk and Moving. Can't get to a computer? Then we've got you covered. Just go to the Indiana SRN app and stay up to date with all of your favorite teams. You can watch live coverage or relive the experience with our on-demand service. Back here at Franklin College. Don't you feel young when you're up here? I do. I mean, Chuck's doing, Chuck doing the electric slide when we're 
TV timeout? Well, especially more when you're dancing, which I'm glad nobody can see it. Pitiful, isn't it? Line drive kick, and it'll oh. be caught on the run, and a return across the 20, 25. Bard hit Pancake. at the 30. Mm. Matino did a great job, first off, just catching that football. All right, Franklin has not had success yet. Five different possessions. Now for Aurora, they've scored all five times. I think this is really big right here for this Franklin defense. Charlie Moore on that tackle, Pancake. Nice job, Charlie, a senior. So here is Luando, who's having a fantastic day. Creighton has had a great day. First down and 10 at their own 30. Luando now pumps, nothing there. He's got a lot of running room ahead of him if he wants to take off, and he will. Heads to the sideline. He may have gotten the first down. No, no, no. He stepped out of bounds about a yard short. Here's what he did, though, Troy. He dropped the ball going out of bounds, and he marked it where the ball went out of bounds before he went out of bounds. That's a good spot, good call by the official. I think what he was trying to do, he's trying to stretch that football out to the marker and lost and, and it. And lost yeah. it. So it'll be second down and short. Remind me of a Kansas City quarterback. Yeah. They'll hand it off. Nothing there. Great defensive play. There he is. Jairo Jada from that left side. 6'4", 260 and a senior. That's going to be loss of a couple on that play. We haven't seen Creed go down for a loss very much. He is just a very strong young man. Quad receivers near side. I haven't used that in a while. Yeah, I know. Look at this. It's the old formation. They're short one guy on this side, though. Franklin is going to be in trouble. There's nobody over here. Only three. They'll go to the opposite side. Low throw. It's going to be incomplete. Pass intended for Pruitt. And it's going to be fourth down. And Franklin dodged a bullet. You're right, Troy. I, di I didn't recognize they didn't have four men on. Uh, there's four receivers over here. Yeah, four receivers, three defensive backs. The one safety was in the middle of the field. And there was a certain, when you have to think about disadvantage for that Franklin defense, you're right, they probably dodged a bullet. First time it's been three and out. That's going to be a wobbly punt that will land inside the 30 and down at the 26-yard line. Hey, our halftime guest this week is Andrew Hendricks, the vice president of Franklin. Stay with us for that. I want to thank a lot of emails last week have commenting on our broadcast, and we're sure glad we're part of the Franklin community. None of them looking to get rid of me yet? Or? No. No. Okay, good. Oh, we got people watching on big screen. All right, here comes Kai Ross. And that Franklin offense, after they gave up the 28 points in the opening quarter, they're down by 11. Here's Jennings. Nothing here. You know, I've been watching our back judge, Mr. Alexander, and the one thing that I'm going to try to become a football official because it looks like he has the best job of the whole day, just kind of looks at every. Now, he does a great job, but he's kind of just pointing, making sure everybody's ready yeah, to go. Do you have the thumbs up? Like thumbs the, up, and then you touch the nose. Touch things the nose, like that. everything else is good. Yeah, and then you get to throw those penalties for uh, yeah. interference. Well, what did he call 14 last week? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Ross, play action, over the middle, ball cut, big time hit, right at the first down marker. Did he hang on? Wow. He sure did. Dylan McKinney took a shot right there. You're going to probably take another look at it here. That was Ernesto Ramirez. Look at this. Welcome to football. Bam. Think that knocked the breath out of him? Oh, I would think so. But you don't, you don't stay on the field. You just... 
Oh, I would. Do what I, well, yeah, well. I'd lay there and roll around like I a little baby. I would think my insurance would be kicking in right now. Yeah, or your rates would go up. Ross to throw again. Ball caught at the 45. Another nice catch, Dylan McKinney. That tells you McKinney can take a shot and get right back out there, huh? So can Spencer Wright. I like how they have rest the running backs. We haven't seen Cora for a while. No, but they did that last week against Olivet. Jennings ended up, if I'm not mistaken, with maybe just as many rushing yards last week as Cora, but Cora was certainly the difference in the receiving side. Franklin, second down and about a yard. Ross to throw. Steps up in the pocket. Look out. Here they come from behind. He's going to get pushed ahead. Ooh. Make it back to the line of scrimmage. A lot of pressure coming from that Aurora defense. I tell you what, secondary had them all covered up. Third and a long one. Red Chrissy. First one in there. Handoff, and it's going to be really close as Jennings trying to get back that yard. But where did they down it? I was watching the official on the other side. Looks like to me he might be short. Oh. Yeah, he's short about. No. Yeah, he's short about six inches. Fourth down. Fourth down to the grid. Ross again in the shotgun, and Aurora jumps. That's a freebie right there. I think they may be talking about this one. Offsides. Woo! Because the head linesman came all the way over, and he's yelling, I got offense. And the, uh, the back, uh, the head, the crew chief said, no, no, I have offsides. That's a big play. Good officiating, good communication. Yep. Tell you what, our officials are great in this conference. We want to thank Officially Human yes. for sponsoring our officials today. Hello, Brenda Hilton. First down at the 43-yard line. Take that back, 48-yard line. Ross to throw, has his man oh! in just Fingertips. out of the reach of McKinney. Yeah. McKinney looking for his second score of the day, and he almost got it. He almost got it in stride, didn't he? Yep. Well, the good news right now for Franklin, as you take another look at it, mm. he had his man beat, is no turnovers yet for this Franklin offense. Now you just started it. Well, I'm just, you know, trying to point out the obvious. Trips near side, second down and long. Handoff Jennings. Jennings tried to cut back and he got buried. Romulus is there for the tackle. Romulus out of, they say he is from, he's out of Belleville, Illinois. Very active today as one of the linebackers there for that Aurora defense. Third down for the grid. So third and long. Grizzlies working with four receivers. Ross over the middle and it's picked off at the 40 yard line. Ramius is there and he's got a return and a big turnover. <laughs> Sorry, coach. <laughs> I, I am so sorry about that. <laughs> I know, send your hate mail to, to me. <laughs> Coach, you can come back any time now. <laughs> oh, my. I promise never to say that again. Oh, the, re re return, the return to the 33-yard line. Your next game is going to be... <laughs> <laughs> Ramius, the senior, 6'3", 220. So now, Aurora back on offense. Excellent field position right here. 
Little swing pass near side, breaking the tackle is Creighton. Creighton 30, 25, 20, up the sideline and into the end zone. How about that from 33 yards? And the Grizzlies have a hard time wrapping up once again. The turnover leads to a score. Yes, it sure did, Troy. <laughs> Look at this. He had him there, didn't wrap. Tell you what, they are just strong. Well, one thing about it is a lot of arm tackling there for Franklin. So now the extra point. Here's Heilick. That really quieted the crowd down here at Franklin College, and the extra point is good. 6.06 to go here in the second quarter, 35-17 Aurora. You're good at keeping the car clean. Good at your insurance. Start with Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance. Online, over the phone, or in person. And stop knocking on wood. So I stopped in at Chick-fil-A for lunch and saw Officer Wilson come in. I decided to place a dine-in mobile order and have a cookie delivered to him just to show appreciation for his service for our community. A few minutes later, I noticed that Officer Wilson had gotten up and left. And I knew he hadn't gotten his cookie yet. And I'm headed to my car. I turn around and I see Allie, and she's running after me. Mr. Police Officer, Mr. Police Officer. <laughs> Usually when someone yells, Officer, Officer, they want to ask me about a ticket they got. I absolutely wanted the cookie. <laughs> this cookie's delicious. <laughs> Back here at Franklin, as you see Aurora set to kick off. I'm being blamed for that last touchdown. I'll take that one. Shorter kick this time and a return by Franklin. They have not returned a kickoff until that one right there. Going to be at the 26. Boy, the one thing about old man momentum is that he can swing and he's, by the way, not very loyal sometimes. No, he's not. He can kind of swing back to the other side. And you had Franklin moving the football, able to get into Aurora territory. And then all of a sudden it makes a big turn. So now Franklin battling uphill ever since the first play from the line of scrimmage. And must I say, this is a big possession for Franklin. I would say it very much is. Cora back in, gets the call, takes the hard hit, and he is brought down. Let me tell you what, Ramius is doing a great job ever since I mispronounced his name early. He's, I think, taking vengeance out on me a little bit, too. I think so. But we haven't had any hate mail from you yet, so that's a good thing. <laughs> Don't forget we have a second game in our double header. We'll talk about that after this play. Back up in Manchester, right? Yes, sir. Second down. Ross looking left, now right. Tucks it under himself. Slides short of the first down. They're going to see him went down at 32. Second half of our double header at 4 o'clock today. It's Manchester and is it Alma? Yes. Is, it is Alma. Yeah. Yes, sir. How about that memory, huh? 4 o'clock, right? 4.07 kickoff. Still trap you got there. I know. Good man. I remember things like lack of turnovers and stuff like that. Clark Chapin and Peyton Brown on the call. Trips left. Third and short. Cora up the middle. First down and all the way to the 40-yard line. Great run by Cora. Also, coming back from the booth today, Nick Lewis in the booth today with the ones and twos. Look at Nick. How about that? Nick you know had what? nothing to do you today or what? You know where he went to school? Butler. We got a lot of dogs working for us. We do. Good people. So after the first down by nice. Cora, coming up on the four-minute mark. Cora again, left side. This time he's going to get stacked up, maybe a gain of one. He just gets swallowed in that hole. You don't know where he is, but he's so agile that looks like he, ah, he looks like he's shaking that off. Well, they end up bringing Jennings in. Jennings, another very good running back. 
And again, that front four for Aurora, you look at Joel Costin at 6'1", 220. 220. Yeah, he's one of the smaller guys yeah. up there, by the way. Two guys go 275, so they got some beef up front. Second down in nine. Hand off again to Core, and he got buried. A little harder to find some yards to run up the middle. So now Malachi Joy back in. Passing situation here on third and long. Did he lose a yard? No, he did not. Okay. Right back to the line of scrimmage. So third and nine from the 41 yard line. Thank you. Franklin with four wide outs, and they get a chance to play right in the middle between the hash marks. That's core in motion. Keeper. Running room, 45, first down into Aurora territory. Nice play call there for Kairos. Design play, quarterback yeah. draw, did a nice job. Sucked everybody inside, he went to the outside. Downfield blocking, that's excellent. Look at the downfield blocking here. Hold him there. He's not bad, he's, not fa he's a little fast. Well, anybody's fast compared to me. <laughs> a turtle passed me today going, Wee! And you were driving. <laughs> uh, we do need to talk about our Uber driver <laughs> in our do. adventure today. He did a great job. Got us right, front door service. First down, football at the 48-yard line, and that's going to fall incomplete. Pass intended. Malachi Joy is there. We need to talk about our Uber driver real quick. We want to thank uh, the vice president of our company to get that taken care of it for us. Again, she did a nice job. It took us to a different location this yeah, time. And you didn't argue with her about how to get here. Not at all. Well, she didn't, told me to be quiet. Yeah. Trips left. Hand off core, right side, got grabbed across the 45 down to the 43 yard line. And you know what they grabbed? They down. grabbed the football, Troy. They didn't grab him, they grabbed the football, and the football stayed with Robbie him. Peterson Jr. making the stop for the Spartans. See that Robbie Peterson, but I think also there was Ramius, who's been the just a terror at the line. linebacker spot. Third and long, boy, the Third Grizzlies downs. have been in this a long, in fact, in these third and longs many times here today. RPO to the left, and Ross is going down. He first got hit by Jalen Jordan. There's oh. a flag down. And then he got hit by number 90, Joel Costin. Late flag. I, I don't know where the late flag came from. Is it on the sidelines? Well, it came from the... Official in front of us. Sideline warning. Yeah. Coach might have got on the field a little bit on that play. Yeah, I'm sure he wanted to go out there and help Ross. Aurora and Aurora will timeout. call the timeout. 143 to go before the half. 35-17. Vice President of Indiana has come in. Thanks for joining us. You know Indiana SRN broadcasts 350 games a year. All sorts of sports. Yeah, we do. Hard to believe, isn't it? Indiana SRN loves to put student athletes first on our website. If you're a business out there, we probably could help you too. Contact us at coach at indianasrn.org. Grandma from out of state thanks you. Mom and dad who can't get to the game thanks you as well. In fact, our athletes watch the games over and over again. Our military has enjoyed the games as well. So sit back and enjoy the game. It's Indiana SRN. By the way, that penalty was a sideline penalty against Franklin well, College. Well, it's a warning, so they don't get yeah. any margin. Yeah. The next time it's a 15-yard yeah. penalty. But the penalty flag did come out. Yes. And so Franklin will have to punt the football away. Good kick. Another good boot. And that's going to go into the end uh, zone. Hey, wise job there. In fact, really nice job there by Matino to let that one go. 
So still a minute 35 before the half. You have a halftime guest, I understand. It's going to be Andrew Hendricks, the VP at Franklin. By the way, don't forget you can follow your favorite schools on HCAC TV, powered by Indiana SRN. You're always going to have a front row seat on that one. Uh, you know, last uh, Saturday night, I watched the DePaul Rose Homing game. Had my popcorn, had my Sprite, had the remote control. Could rewind a fast on the instant replay. Good ball club. Good games. So Lawando now working with four receivers. Creighton will stay in as the lone setback, throwing over the middle. Quick hitter, ball caught, dropped at the 35-yard line. Michael Boland on the reception. That was a rocket out of the arm that time by Lawando. That was a smart timeout because the time, they, they had plenty of time for another touchdown, actually. Yeah, they got plenty of time with this offense. Four wideouts once again. Lawando to the sideline, and the official threw his hat down because the receiver went out of bounds that was connor bright now the receiver went out of bounds because the defender uh, maybe helped him but that's perfectly legal take a look back at that first completion this was a nice pass nice catch in fact second down and 10. 114 on the clock here in the first half we will run down some halftime numbers eventually at some point. Lawando to the sideline. Did he catch it? Nope. No. Trey Madsen can't come up with it. And by the way, the quarterback, Lost Lawando, his yeah, his uh, helmet came off. He got hit pretty hard. Now, by rule, guess where he has to go? He's got to go out for a play. So it'll be Tyler Adkins, by the way, is a Martinsville graduate. So he's not too far. In fact, I saw us about four or five different players from Martinsville here today. Yeah, there, there's a, a slew of them here. Third down and long. Stops the clock at 109. Adkins, he's going to throw immediately. Crossing route ball caught. First down and more down to the 40-yard line. Perhaps 41, depending on the spot. Great throw. Not bad coming in. Yeah. How about, hey, coach, take me out one for one. Yeah. For That's going to be the final timeout for Aurora. 102 remaining, 35-17. Every person has a story waiting to be told. Mr. Jack comes in every Monday. Yeah, that's right. One day I noticed his hat said he was a Korean War veteran. I asked him if he'd ever been to the Korean War Memorial. No, I never had a chance to go. That was the day I knew we had to do whatever it took to get him there. Man, he made it happen. I got to go to Washington, D.C. to all the memorials. The World War II Memorial, Naval Memorial, Korean War Memorial. Took all kind of pictures and everything. And it was a good trip, too. I'm glad that I could be a part of Mr. Jack's story. We encourage you to follow us on Twitter at Indiana SRN. Find upcoming games, video. Back once again here at Franklin and Luando to throw far side ball caught. We've got interference. That's going to be a flag against Franklin. I think that if I were Aurora, I'd love to have Madsen get the catch on that and forget the penalty. Let's take another look at that last catch by Trey Madsen, and you'll see the interference here. Right here's the interference there. Did he? He did catch he that did ball. He did catch it. Yes, wow. he did. See, wouldn't you rather have the catch? I mean, you got to be given the option there. Well, actually, yeah, I, yeah, I agree. So I'd be like, I'll decline that. I'll take the result of the, the pass play. Nonetheless, still an opportunity. We're near the red zone once again for Aurora. They have no timeouts, but still 57.2 seconds to go here in the first half. Creighton, the lone setback, set just to the left of Lawando. Trips right. Lawando looking left, and he gets hit, and he's going to shovel the football ahead. It's loose, and then jumped on by Oh, fumbled again. Still fumbled. Still loose, but I think 
They may blow it dead. I heard a whistle there after Creighton had jumped on the football. And they will get it back nonetheless. Connor Bright eventually coming out of the pile with it. Here is, I think that's a forward pass. That's an incomplete pass, isn't well, it? Well, it looked like to me a shovel again. So you're right, it should have been an incomplete pass. Luando near sideline, ball caught, got a foot in. That's Bright again on the reception, and now they're in the red zone at the 12. He got out of bounds, still 30.7 seconds to go. Aurora wisely doing a nice job getting that ball to the sidelines. Boy, and now they're knocking on the door once again. Here's the play again. It looked like a shovel pass yeah, to it me. Does. Luando. And movement up front. Let's see everybody pointing at each other. It'll go against Aurora. You know who sold that? Number 93. Isaac Warren sold that because he said the the uh, center was moving to football. Well, he sold it well enough to get a five-yard penalty. It'll put it back to the 17-yard well, well, line. If you were six foot foot six foot and 295 pounds, I think you would agree with him as well. Yeah, no arguing with good, him. Good call. Four wideouts in empty backfield. Actually, five wideouts trips to the right. Lawando. Plenty of time to the end zone. Tipped at the last second. Wow. Great defensive play there for Franklin. That was Hayden Kermode there, the inside linebacker, doing a great job on coverage. He doesn't put a hand up. That's a, That's sure a touchdown. Sure touch That's a touchdown. This is a great play. And he went. He stretched all the way out for that one. Good play, young man. Second down. They can still get a first down out of this if they can get it to the two-yard line. Still 23.8 seconds, so still a plenty of time. Four wide, hash mark left. Stepping up will be Luando. Looking, 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 directing, throwing to the end zone. On the sideline, did he get in? They will wait and see he got to what? Nothing. Looked like they're going to say it was incomplete. I haven't seen a, an official yet give us the call because it made it look like the one official said he got inbounds. Penalty flag. On the there is a penalty got a, flag got down. A flag. Got an illegal man downfield. Well, certainly understandable that took Luando a while to get rid of the football and of course you block 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 and then you head down so one of the offensive linemen guilty there I don't think he caught the ball and bounce though Troy hard to tell nonetheless it'll be second down clock is at 13.5 maybe time for two if they get something to the sideline And whistles will stop play. I think Franklin wants to talk about it, so they get the timeout. Want to remind you, we have a halftime guest coming up. Keith will, I'm sure, throw a lot of hardball questions at him, right? Will you do that? or? I'll just ask him about uh, turnovers. Yeah, well, yeah, I bet you will. <laughs> that might be a subject that's going to come up quite a bit. Yes, sir. By the way, we can tell you right now. There's still delays in the uh, Division One. I haven't gotten to that, but I can tell you this. The Spartans are now nearing 400 yards of total offense here in the first half of play. They're currently at 392. Well, that second half defensively for Franklin is gonna be just huge. In fact, this play right here, potentially two plays will be big. So here we go after the Franklin timeout. Trips right, it's single receiver to the left. That'll be Connor Bright. Lawando rolling, throwing downfield, ball caught at the five yard line. Hard hit, Pruitt goes down, four seconds to go. 
three seconds. Can they spike it in time? And let's wait. I don't think they did. Franklin sending their players into the locker room. And that's going to do it for the first half. Good effort there by Aurora to try to get down and spike the football. Well, they would love to have had one more timeout right there. But a wild beginning to this one in which we saw the first play from scrimmage. Creighton, 91 yards in the score. They end up, speaking of Aurora, scoring 28 points in that opening period of play. But Franklin, 17 points of their own. And we're at halftime at 35-17. So... If you're Franklin, what do you talk about at halftime other than we got to wrap up better on defense? We got to play better defense. We got to wrap, and uh, and then and then we got to really finish some, you know, end zone plays. We yeah. need to finish. Uh, but all in all, at 35-17, I, I, we thought this. We thought by this time we would have 70 points. But yeah, it was they uh, took pretty quick uh, first quarter. Yeah, first half. It was certainly setting the tone that way, and we do know that Franklin will get the football to begin the third quarter. So we're at halftime. We'll come back. Keith will have his halftime guest coming up. We'll run down some of the first half stats and also maybe get you updated if we can on some of the scores going on around the country. I know there have been some weather delays notre dame had their game delayed purdue had their game delayed today and iu played last night they picked up a win over indiana state we'll get you updated on that scoreboard coming up a little bit later as well halftime 35 17 aurora at morales group staffing we are all about building better futures and during these times we are working hard to put people to work we are now hiring for hundreds of jobs with pay up to 17 an hour. Visit our website at moralesgroup.net or text JOBS, J-O-B-S, to 317-472-7600 to apply now and get hired today. We encourage you to follow us on Twitter at Indiana SRN. Find upcoming games, video highlights, and much more. Follow us now at Indiana SRN. Hey folks, good to be with you for tonight's game. My name is Andy Simpson, and I'm a licensed IHSAA football official. And welcome to Friday Night Football, powered by Indiana SRN. On behalf of the 340 football officials, the IHSAA, the crew here at Indiana SRN, we hope you enjoyed tonight's game. And more important, don't forget to subscribe to the Indiana SRN YouTube page. As you're watching tonight's contest, I'm going to show you a few of our signals that will help you better understand the information we are trying to convey. Touchdown. Safety. First down. Holding or illegal use of hands. Encroachment or offsides commonly known, false start or illegal formation on the offense, or a free kick scrimmage violation, face mask, intentional grounding, roughing the passer, clipping, illegal shift, illegal motion, illegal block, pass interference by the offense or the defense, delay of game, and the one signal we dislike, and you as fans don't like seeing, unsporting. We'd like to thank everyone for tuning in tonight and following us on Indiana SRN. You can also tune in to the Football Weekly Show and Coaches Show every Saturday morning at 8 a.m. on IndianaSRN.org. Finally, if you've ever thought about becoming a high SAA official, www.ihsaa.org and click on the officials tab or call the IHSA office at 317-846-6601. Now sit back and enjoy the game. My name is Brittany. A little thing I love about the Egg White Grill is the toasty English muffin. It's toasted perfectly. It's just a little crispy, but not like hard crispy, but just crispy enough that when you bite into it, everything is perfect. 
My name is Curtis, and I love the egg white grill because the egg itself, it's like soft and fluffy, like a pillow. I, and I, and I, I would eat my pillow, but I'd eat <laughs> the, the Chick-fil-A breakfast egg white sandwich for sure. They say nice guys don't finish first. So maybe it's time to reconsider what it means to be first. It's about being your best, but knowing you could be even better. It's being present, but respectful of history. You sure you want to make that move? It's donating something more valuable than money. It's believing in yourself and something bigger. It's coming from different families. We're treating each other like brothers. It's not just being a man, it's being a mason. Back here at halftime with the score 35-17. Keith Myers with you. It's halftime. Thank you very much for joining us. As yes, we are. He made it. Hey, Andy. Hey. How are you? Doing great. Run all behind. Thank you. <laughs> nice Busy day on campus nice today. Nice suit jacket. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a lot of people on campus today. It is a big day. We had uh, blue and gold day today. So. Uh, Blue Gold Day, uh, Andrew, uh, An I, I call you Andy's Andy. fine, yeah. Andrew Hendricks, uh, the vice president who used to do athletics yep. and yep. now sells popcorn in the concession stand <laughs> in his spare time. Yeah. But uh, Blue Gold Day, a lot of recruits on campus today. A lot, yeah. We had uh, so a couple different events. I mean, salute service, and we had, you know, a good group of football young men uh, on campus with their families. And then Blue and Gold Day is one of our big days for juniors and seniors in the fall. And we had a, a you know, couple hundred family members in town. So got to uh, uh, impress them with a day of football. And, of course, the touchdown club you can't pass up free food. So uh, all uh, good stuff. 1120, I know where I go every time I yes. come down. So uh, talk a little bit about the new position that you are holding and, and uh boy you ran Sully uh, all summer long but man what a great fit and uh we're glad that you're in that position I'm sure you are too well thank you yeah um you know I've only ever worked for President Prather when he was coach Prather and athletic director Prather and you know he gave me this opportunity and uh I you know I'll never be far away from athletics and athletics is still part of my purview overall um but Super blessed to have a great coaching staff and Coach Marshall taking over as athletic director is a great fit. He just, you know, bleeds for Franklin, loves Franklin, and lives here in town and, uh, you know, of course has a super successful baseball program too. So I expect that we'll just continue to see good things from all of our, our teams and coaches. But this new opportunity is great for me. It brings a little more of my background to the forefront when I worked in the Fortune 500, some of the other companies I've worked for in the past. and. So we handle, you know, not only all the admissions work, but all the advertising, marketing, financial aid. So it's it's a big responsibility, but we're certainly ready for the challenge. Talk about the partnership with Indiana SRN. You guys, uh, we worked this out this summer, and it looks like we're going to be uh, a permanent stay. We'll, we'll, we'll get some sponsorships, and it's a, I think it's a win-win for all of us. Absolutely. I mean, it, when we've seen anything that's that's been sponsored by SRN, it's just quality broadcast quality people uh, you know as a coach I know it's made me feel better and our parents that you know can't come to things when they've been able to see some of the broadcasts on like our uh, HCAC championships and things like that from various sports and to have them out here at every football game is 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 awesome for us it exposes you know Franklin College to a wider audience that um, quite frankly uh, I think might not even realize that we have such a jewel here uh, right in the little town of Franklin, but uh, you know, athletics is a big deal here, and having uh, legitimate sponsors and little bit legitimate partners like SRN is really helpful. Talk a little bit about game day. You know, a lot of people may only see it 35, maybe 45 minutes before game time, but there's people out here at 7:30, 8 o'clock at the gates setting up yeah. things. Uh, the, the partnership that you have with the community is helpful, but your staff pitches in as well. Everybody's on board on game day. Yeah, absolutely. I can't give enough credit to the Touchdown Club, but also to our Alumni and Development Office, Vice President Dana Cummings and her crew. They just do an amazing job. I got, I mean, shout out to Emily Alibo and her group. I mean, they do awesome things at every turn. If you ever ask them for something, they're the first ones to step up and volunteer. They're out here at all the games. 
Touchdown Club does some great things. And the funny thing is, is people come and see this, that, that like all the recruits on campus, they think this is amazing. And I said, if you come in three weeks and you're here for a homecoming, it'd be 10 times. This, oh, yeah. You yeah. know, and that just goes to show what kind of alumni spirit there is here. So, you know, as we, we look at this season, the football team struggling a little bit again today. But what a tough schedule that he that coach puts together the first three weeks because it's ready for the grind in a couple weeks. You got to get ready for the grind because the season and the con this conference is so well balanced. Uh, anybody could win this conference. Oh, yeah. And I think when we get into, you know, conference play, you know, we'll, we'll see where this pays off. And I know it's tough and, and you know, no one ever likes to, to be down fighting back uh, in these games. But, you know, Aurora is obviously a very talented team, coached well and has some athletes. But uh, uh, Coach Hendel's hard nosed and he knows what it takes. And, <laughs> and he's put together a staff this year that I really enjoy. I mean, we've got the gamut now. We've got some real some coaches with some real charisma. Um, and then just the, the, across the group that balances each other off. And, you know, I'm happy to see, uh, you know, Coach Hill, Coach Neal join the roster this year, and they're doing some awesome things. And just the energy level in general, not just with football, but across campus, you can just feel it. You know, there's momentum. I tell you, Coach, when we come in the door and we get here two and a half hours before game time, and when we're greeted with people smiling, opening up the doors for us, run, helping run cables if we need run cables or those things, that's a win-win situation for all of us, and it, it, it's a contribute to you because you started that when <laughs> we first met you a couple of years ago. Talk a little bit about the swimming program. Yeah. Uh, let's talk a little bit about that because we got a coach that knows swimming up here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a yeah, uh, little you know bittersweet that this is going to be my my last year um, doing it, but I don't think I'll ever be far from it. Uh, these young people have been so important in my life and. Um, you know, we've turned out some some pretty good kids over the years. So we're, we're excited. We've got a good group of young men and women this year joining us, freshmen. Uh, I think our women's team will probably be back this year, next year, into kind of where we were in 2019 pre-pandemic. And, we, you know, we had seven national qualifiers right. at that time. And, you know, that's a that's, you know, a huge event for being the really enrollment wise, the smallest school represented it at nationals. I mean, we we kind of take that Hoosier mentality, you know, to uh, small schools can win too so um, I, I'm really impressed with these young women and uh, the guys are going to be uh, young but uh, got some pretty fast bucks so we got to say this real quick the HCAC conference championship once again will be on Indiana SRN and on HCAC.tv yep. I, I we've worked very hard on that and the commissioner of this conference has done a yeah. tremendous job. We are lucky to have Jay Jones. He is, uh, there's not a school in the conference, not a not a president, not an AD that wouldn't say the same thing. I, it, he's a quality, quality uh, person, individual, and he really has everybody's best interest. And he looks out for all of us, and, and he wants to promote, you know, uh, the HCAC. He wants us to be up on that, that, that level with everybody else, and and I think we, we certainly can be. And, and again, partnerships like this uh, make a big difference. Yeah, We appreciate it. Now that we both say that, Monday when we have that call, he'll <laughs> say, hey, thanks for the shout out. Uh, final question uh, on you now with your role changes. What is your role like on game day? Because you used to run yeah. game day. Yeah. Is it different or is it the same but different style of doing it? Uh, I think it's different, yeah. I mean, like today, you know, my focus is much more on, um, you know, talking with our alums, especially talking with our recruits on campus. We use these game day experiences as big recruiting events. I mean, I think we have um, 10 or 11 basketball players here. We have we had 13, you know, football players. We had almost 100 uh, young men and women here for Blue and Gold Day. So, you know, that takes a lot of my time now, whereas I'm not necessarily worried about is the is the ticket, you know, Wi-Fi working or whatever. So, um, and just, you know, and that's a little bit more my style, being able to just talk with people, you know, so. A couple years ago, I met this guy, and he spent a, about a 30 minutes with me about the philosophy of Franklin College, and you sold me. I yeah. wish I had uh, some recruiting, you know, some time left. But uh, Troy will tell you, I can't run, I can't throw, <laughs> but I can do a very good job talking. But we appreciate what you've done for us, yeah. and uh, we'll see you again. And you know, and hope coming. I, I can't wait. I, I can't It'll wait. It'll be fun. Will the Indiana SRN float be able to come? Oh, and, yeah, we'd love that. That would be awesome, wouldn't it? We'd love that. I'll, yeah. I'll get Troy on that. We'll see if Troy <laughs> can get that done. Yeah. Andy, right. thank you so much. Great, thank you. We'll guys. We'll take a time out when we come back. A lot more for you at halftime.
can't get to a computer? Then we've got you covered. Just go to the Indiana SRN app and stay up to date with all of your favorite teams. You can watch live coverage or relive the experience with our on-demand service. Back here at halftime, there you see the score, 35-17. Let's run down some numbers real quick. First off, for Franklin, they were led in rushing by Cora, 12 attempts, 100 yards and a touchdown. Jennings finished with six carries, 20 yards, and Ross, five carries for 13 yards. By the way, Ross finished with, in that first half, nine of 18 passing, one interception and a touchdown. 129 yards leading the way for Aurora in the rushing department a good first half for Creighton finished with eight attempts 214 yards get this averaging 26.8 yards per carry and four touchdowns in the first half and also with 92 yards rushing in the first half quarterback Luando in fact, six carries, 92 yards. He averaged 15 carries or 15 yards per carry. That's just crazy numbers in the first half. Luando, eight of 16, 94 yards and a touchdown through the air. He was sacked one times. Madsen, his favorite receiver, five receptions, 68 yards and a touchdown again in the first half of play. Look at uh, some of the individual leaders or take that back, let's look at the team stats real quick. Uh, first off for Aurora, 16 first downs. They rushed for 306 yards, averaging 21.9 yards per carry. They also finished with 116 passing yards, and if my math is correct, that is 422 yards of total offense. Get this number here. They averaged 13.6 yards per play. Those are some big numbers in the first half. Meanwhile, for Franklin, they ended up with 12 first downs, 133 yards on the ground. They still averaged 5.8 yards per carry. They also ended up with 129 passing yards, so 262 yards of total offense in the first half for Franklin. But again, they trail it here, 35 to 17. When we come back, we'll get you updated on the college football scoreboard. There's some games that are now underway after getting a weather delay earlier. One of those, Purdue, has not gotten their game underway. We'll update you on the top 25 scoreboard coming up in a moment right here on Indiana SRN. Time. We're uh, oh, about two minutes away from the start of the second half. Let's get you updated on some of the games that are underway. In fact, almost a completion of a couple of games. Number 22, Colorado, showing they're for real. They beat Nebraska, or beating Nebraska today, 29-7 to in the fourth quarter. Ball State made another long road trip. They went to Kentucky last week. This time they go to Georgia. They're losing in the fourth quarter, 45-3. to Ohio State. Now leading Youngstown State in the fourth, 35 to seven. Penn State all over Delaware in the fourth quarter, 56 to seven. Baylor trying to pull off the upset. They're beating number 12 Utah, 13-6 late in the fourth. Notre Dame had their game delayed because of weather. They're leading North Carolina State, 10 nothing in the second quarter. Kansas State now leading Troy, 35-13 in the fourth. Charleston Southern. They're trying to pull off an upset over number 25, Clemson. They're tied at 14 in the second. These are 330 kickoffs. It'll be 20, number 23, Texas A&M at Miami. Michigan hosting UNLV. Michigan ranked number two. 
And also coming up at 3.30, number 20 Ole Miss takes on number 24 Tulane. And then later on tonight, Austin P at number 9 Tennessee. Tulsa's at number 8 Washington. Number 17, North Carolina will be hosting Appalachian State. It's number 21, Duke against Lafayette. 18th rated Oklahoma will be hosting SMU. The big game of the day, number 11, Texas at number 3, Alabama. That'll kick off at 7 o'clock tonight on ESPN. Number 13, Oregon is at Texas Tech. 14th rated LSU hosting Grambling. 19th rated Wisconsin on the road at Washington State. Number 4, Florida State will be home against Southern Miss. Also, number 16, Oregon State hosting UC Davis. And number 6, USC taking on Stanford. The last time they'll meet as Pac-12 opponents as we'll see Stanford move on to the ACC, USC on to the Big Ten. All right, Coach, we're ready for the second half. We talked about the explosiveness and what we have seen this Aurora offense can do, and now Franklin will get the football to begin the third quarter. And got to find a way. We mentioned it before we went to the break that got to do a better job on defense, wrapping up, stopping the big plays. I think uh, this uh, first possession is key. Uh, you got to get some points um, uh, and maintain, and then the defense. Uh, actually, the offense slowed down. Yeah. In the second second quarter, if we kept on running the way we would, we had 56 points to 28. But uh, a good first half of football for both teams offensively. Uh, the big play count, as you talked about earlier, is at now 11. So uh, it would be very interesting uh, how Franklin comes out in the first uh, second half. Yeah, we had to take the one touchdown away from her big play when Creighton scored, but it wasn't. 40 yards or more, so. Yeah, it was 35. <laughs> we do have standards here at HCA TV and Indiana SRN, so here we go. Second half ready to get it away. Don't forget, don't miss the chance to be part of the excitement, leave a lasting impact as Indiana SRN Game Day sponsor. If you'd like to be a part of it, make sure you join us. Let's create unforgettable game days together and contact Coach at IndianaSRN.org. Halftime score, Bill Ludlow on assignment as he is watching Butler taking on Taylor at halftime score 38 to 7, the Bulldogs. There, things weren't going very well, but they're better now. I heard Chuck applied for the job and was the second one. He said, I'm sorry, Chuck, you're not it. So he was the second one out. Yeah. Yeah, so not the second choice. I tell you what, we they're lost because we gained a good director. We did. That kick will sail into the end zone. Ah, <laughs> uh, what do you got to know to be a coach, right? I mean, you throw hey, a few plays. Hey, <laughs> I'm just that kidding. hurts. <laughs> wow. I used to be a coach, I know. It ends up consuming you, so yes, I know the feeling. All right, here we go. Kai Ross trying to get this team back on track here in the second half. Biggest question right now is if the defense, if they can do what they did in that second quarter, they held Aurora to seven, and then get this offense rolling, see if they can get back in this ball game. Trips to the right. Hand off Jennings, and Jennings got hit immediately. Take your pick. He got rolled by about three different players, and Christian Bauer, one of those, the outside linebacker. So Jennings gets the start in the second half. This is really nothing new. We saw Cora getting a break last week. But unless he's hurt, well, I'm sure we'll see him again. After that loss of a couple of yards, it'll be second down and 12. Getting sunshine. We had clouds early, now it's sunny. Ooh. Jennings able to get away from one defender, takes the hit across the 25 to near the 27. He had big 95 Isaiah Parent coming after him. I'd get out of there myself. I would get out of there as well. I think one time we ought to get here early. Have a couple How of the big. How much earlier do we have to get her? Well, uh, we could get her at the same time, but let's we're a ranger. We're gonna have a couple of players take a shot at you or two, and I want to see what happens. See, oh, see if I can hit the hole. <laughs> yeah, that'd be that. That's brilliant. I like that idea. Thank you. 
third down. Ross to throw, has a man, ball caught, 40, and a first down. Nice reception by Spencer Wright. You know, Sean Crawl a year ago got here early and had a snowball fight with the offensive line of uh, Manchester, and it was not pretty. They pelted him pretty good, huh? There's some movement up front. I That's think, on the defense. Yeah, they're going to say they got big 99, Jalen Jordan jumping. First penalty of the second half. It's amazing some of the ideas we come up with to try to put us in the danger zone, huh? Yeah. I figure as long as it's not me, I think everybody else is fair game. I'm just glad that I'm no longer a sideline reporter because last year my assignment as sideline reporter, though it was fun, was very challenging. Uh, and the, the particular of where you put me during a baseball season and a water slide was very nice. Jerry comes up with great ideas. Yeah, we try. Jennings, sweep around Got the it. right side, Look dives that. ahead, first down. That's great head up. He it for another. The ball at the 47-yard line. Jennings, boy, I tell you what, I like he runs it. well. Look at this. And he just followed his blocker. He got he got about three or four yards on his own there. Yeah. Don't forget our second game of the doubleheader at 4 o'clock at Manchester. Don't leave us. You can probably catch the second half. That game will kick off at what, around 4 o'clock. Play action. Ball caught, 40 yard line and dropped. It'll be shy of a first down by a couple of yards, but Malachi Joy again there for Franklin. I need to thank Tom for my popcorn as I went down to uh, refresh myself. And Tommy was uh, making some popcorn and he said, Here's coach, this is yours. All right. Young man, 15 I know, year old. I know last time we were here, you were trying to accost a couple of guys who were giving it away from up here. Yes, I did. Second, I was not going to let that happen again. Second down. Ross, here they come. Look out. He's going to get dropped back at about the 44 yard line. Did the ball come loose? They say it, it may up. have, but he was down. Yep. Ross has had, that's only the second time he's been sacked. He's had some pretty good time this afternoon to throw the football, but now you're third and long. This has happened a lot today, too. Yes, sir. Third down for the grid. On the Spartan 44 yard line. Let's see what Ross and the Grizzlies have in store here as they work with four receivers in this set. Spencer Wright. And looks like it's going to be We'll pick him up in a moment. Big blitz on at the middle, and the pass intended for Wright falls incomplete at the 40. And Kai Ross, he had to get rid of that football extremely fast because Nordmeyer was blitzing up the middle, and he had no time. He had to get rid of it, so it'll be fourth down. And Aurora will get it back. Good defensive play there, so Martino is deep standing at his own 10. I want to thank Coach Marcher, Marshall and 29 others uh, tuning into the broadcast today. Franklin will punt it away. Good Ooh. kick. Look at that. Well, it took a sideways that, roll, and Matino just stays away from he it. He thought about it, though, didn't he? He did. He did. His eyes got a little bit big. See where they spot the football out of bounds at, what, the 15-yard line. So Luando will bring the offense back out. 28 points in the opening quarter of play. It's in store after the adjustments made at halftime. They reset the shot uh, play clock to 25. Creighton again, the lone setback. They'll fake it to him, throw it out in the flat. Ball caught, 20, out to about the 25, very close. To another first down maybe on the reception, yard. Madsen. Maybe a yard short. Well, that's not a yard. That's about an inch short, isn't it? Yeah, it's not much. Nope. I think they gave Hayden Kermode the credit for the tackle. Trips, Trips here. Side. 
second down and short. Quarterback will keep it himself. Got the first down across the 30, near the 31, maybe 32. With the keeper. He keeps it for Spartan, first down. That's what makes him so dangerous. We mentioned his performance <laughs> last week, 100 yards on the That's ground, 196 the through the air. The his foot speed, it, it just, you know, very impressive. First down for the Spartan. On their own line. So it'll be first down. Football placed at the 31. Here comes the blitz. Luando hands it off, and it'll be Creighton over the left side. Nice run by Creighton. Looks Get like he gets about seven or eight on that carry. If you can continue to do seven or eight yards on first down, it sure makes it easier on second and third down. And you, and you, what you're also doing is eating up the clock because the more time you have it, the less time that Franklin has it. And Franklin needs it a lot more down, being down by 17. Trips now near side, hash mark left. Creighton the carry. Oh, nice defense, way to collapse. Abel still to get a yard out of it. The, Third down and one. Here it comes. Yep, hurry up offense, too. Well, he's certainly trying to draw him off sides right there, that hard count. Quarterback sneak. Luando. Check the sidelines again. Down to 10. Oh, he fumbled the ball. Yep, big fumble, but a flag is down on the opposite side. Is this false start on the on the center? Well, nothing went right there for Aurora. Not at all. They're saying it's on Franklin. Always love that when they're pointing at each yeah, other. They're you know. pointing at each other. So it's going to be offsides against Franklin. And an automatic first down. Man, that's just shooting yourself in the foot. Ball hit the turf. I think he recovered the ball. I think they got Owen Ogle, yep. number 90. So first down for Aurora. Creighton stays in as the lone setback, and there's all kinds of moves. <laughs> Take your pick. You got about four different players. Well, I think we were thinking about we're in Canada, eh? <laughs> you talk about a different game. That's nah. Canadian Football League, huh? You know, back in the day during the strike time, I, that's all I watched was Can Canadian football, and I fell in love with it. And then I watched the NFL came back, and it was like, and uh, there's comparison. Kind of boring? It is. Yeah. So after the penalty, move the football back to the 40-yard line. Luando out to his favorite running back, Creighton. Creighton will get a big chunk of it back out to the 47. making the shot for the Grizz. Riddick Bolton there on the stop, the sophomore outside linebacker. These linebackers, other than commoted, about 225, they're not big. We haven't heard a lot of Bo Hess today at that big game last week. Second down for the well, they're running away from him. On their own. Yeah, they are. Second down and long. Luando to throw, Same swing pass, and nothing there. That was smelled out quickly yep. by Bolton. Same identical pass. Uh, play. That was Ty Pruitt on the reception. So There's a big third down here for this Franklin defense. First half, we had a combined 600 plus yards between these two teams, 411 by Aurora alone. Here's another big third down. Ball caught on the sideline. Did he get? No. no he was about a yard That's short. That ball was led to him, and he just didn't, he ran out of room. 
Must have felt fine getting at least close. Connor Bright on the reception. And another quarterback keeper this time. It's going to be very close, but at least from the spot I see, he may have gotten there. Franklin feels they got the stop. This always depends on the spot of the football. Oh. Oh, they moved it back there. They did. He, he moved it about it. four inches. All right. It's time to predict here. I will say he's short by the nose of the football. Yeah, he's short. Yeah, they've already decided. In fact, they moved the chains the other way. No. Here they come. Oh, they're going to – There's. I can okay. see it from here. All right, let's see if our camera guy – if our camera guy – He's short. He's good. He's a, He's the best camera guy we got in the business. He's short. By I – Mm. Oh! By the nose of the football, he is short. So Franklin takes over on downs on the quarterback sneak and big break there for this defense. Got to shout it out. Daniel Thacker, whoop, whoop, you're the bomb. Great shot. Sticks is up there with him, but Daniel had that shot. Nice job. I tell you what, best director in the business right now. There you go. I'm telling you. You're only you're not saying that because he's got to give you a ride home or anything, do you? No, my wife. No, the Uber driver. Uber driver. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My wife. Oh, and you. Yeah. Uber driver uh, gave it away, didn't it? Must I? be a tax write-off. Yes. It, well, maybe. First down and ten. Ross hand off and Cora back in takes a hard hit. Might get a yard. He might have got a football length. This popcorn's pretty good. By the way, Brock Veach is in the lineup now he did not get the start today but he is in he came up a little gimpy and i'm glad your popcorn's good thank you <laughs> gotta lighten it up here. i know she didn't give any any to us i i offered some to chuck he passed my name's not chuck though man in motion ross to throw steps up there's a flag downfield ball caught near side that'll be spencer right there's another flag I think they're going to get at least McKinney for a block in the back. We have two flags. I saw the one come in immediately. Is that Mr. Alexander who threw that flag? It is, I believe. Good for him. Here comes the trainers. We will not show the injury. We'll take a break. How about that? You're good at making big announcements. We're having a go! <laughs> We're good at your insurance. Start with Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, online, over the phone, or in person, and stop knocking on wood. We encourage you to follow us on Twitter, at IndianaSRN. Find upcoming games, video highlights, and much more. Follow us now at Indiana SRN. We encourage you to follow us on Twitter at Indiana SRN. Find upcoming games, video highlights, and much more. Follow us now at Indiana SRN. The most important people in the football game is the guys that are trainers. Uh, and our heads up guy... Holding. Offsetting penalties there. That is, by the way, Brett Chrissy, the senior defensive lineman who is injured. Looks like it's his left leg. But the trainers have done, the Franklin trainer was the first one to that guy and immediately got him care. It's just, Troy, when we played, we didn't have many trainers. In fact, we didn't have register trainers. Right. We had coaches that were the trainers. And he'd just tell you to rub dirt on it or give you a salt tablet. Yeah, get up. Second down after offset penalties. Ross will keep it himself. Got the corner. Nice block. 45-40. Takes a hard hit. Loses the football. But a big run by Kai Ross for the first down. That looked like a busted play. Look at this. Looks like they're going to get him right here. Then he turned on the Jets here. I think he loses the football. Yeah, he sure did. 
football at the 33 yard line, first and 10. Cora stays in the ball game, and he'll get the call tripped up after a gain of a yard or so. I think Cora, the ball carrier. You know, two of the longest hours, or should say two of the professions that put in the longest hours are trainers, SIDs at this level. And I tell you, the SID here has done a nice job. Yeah. We always get our stuff. I got it on Sunday night, and I think I transferred it to you yeah. on Monday. And then behind the scenes as well, the people behind the scenes that, that looked up the hands, all begins with the good athletic directors and the programs. Yep. Trips right. Ross, play action. Ball caught underneath. 30, 25, 20, and still on his feet inside the 15. The catch and the yards after catch for Franklin. That'll be Derek Thompson, the tight end. And you know, you heard Andy say how important athletics is for small school college. Uh, they, it's just a priority. Now trips left, Ross will throw a quick header and ball caught right at the last second by Malachi Joy. I'm not sure, let's see if they say it's going to be an incomplete pass. He was not expecting that ball no. to get to him that quickly. Uh, that ball got, and that was in the sun. Look at this first down. Catch and then go straight uphill. We mentioned Derek Thompson, the tight end out of Brownstown Central. We mentioned his name couple of times today. He's not too far from home, is he? No. So now, second down. Ross will hand it off. Cora sweep right, tripped up inside the 10. Gary Cora on the carry. It's a big possession here. You get the score. All of a sudden, it's 35-24, and it's a two-possession game. The, the thing that is hurting Franklin right now is the time. Do they have enough time? Well, they're down to the four-minute mark here. I mean, I think it's big right here. It could be tough if they don't score. Here's Cora, He's got right the corner. side. Oh, well, he had the corner. Nice job. He's going to get dropped. Robbie Nothing Peterson there. Peterson. Looks like they're going to give that tackle to Robbie Peterson, the corner. So now it's fourth down. We're going to go ahead and go for it right here. Franklin's marching band playing a little bit of tunes today. So here we go, fourth, fourth down. down Jennings in as the lone setback. Trips left. Ross throws to the end zone. Up and making the catch. Does he hold on? Touchdown. Dylan McKinney is second of the day. What a play on fourth down. A little daring. They tested the, the defense. This is great coverage, Troy. I mean, that's great coverage. There's nothing up. The only thing you can do is probably push him down. Yeah, that was against Robbie Peterson, I believe, once again. Crutchfield in to attempt the extra point. A line drive kick hits the upright on the left. And though they try to make a return, there's a flag down. That's going to go against Franklin. I think they may pick this up because that ball is not, technically that ball is not dead yet, right? Because that hit the opposite goal. But can't you run? You can well, run the I, ball back, correct? I, I think, though, once it hits the upright, no. But the officials will gather. We'll let them talk about it. We'll take a break. 3.32 to go in the third, 35-23.
can't get to a computer? Then we've got you covered. Just go to the Indiana SRN app and stay up to date with all of your favorite teams. You can watch live coverage or relive the experience with our on-demand service. Unsportsmanlike conduct penalty against Franklin College after the extra point hit the upright. It is then no good. And so the penalty went against Nathan Loman. Can we change that rule? Well, I guess if you talk to the right people. Okay. Kick off from the 20 yard line. So it'll be good field position here for Aurora. They'll pick it up at the 30 once again on the return. Matino, he breaks it 50. And all of a sudden you find yourself into Franklin territory. You know, we could turn this into like arena football and such where you have a netting up there, and if you miss it, it bounces off. You can catch it and run the other way. I like that idea. Yeah. Yeah. What I don't understand, did you hear a whistle? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Then I guess they had it right. Last time I checked, they have 2020 hearing. 2020 hearing. Football at the 45-yard line. That's right, you heard it here first. Handoff, big play again by Creighton. Creighton inside the 30, finally dropped. This young man is just tearing this defense up here this afternoon. Demarion Newell making a stop for the grid. They get a score here, this is gonna be really, really tough. You mentioned not only time, but this defense unable to stop this offense. Here this afternoon, we'll give you some of the numbers coming up here in a couple of moments. Throw out the flat ball caught down to about the 22-yard line. There's Trey Madsen once again on the reception. Riddick Bolton making a stop for the Grizz. Trey Madsen on the carry. One of these days we'll have to talk about some of the rules Second down for the football spot. I'd like to see changed. Okay. Second down. <laughs> oh, I, you should hear our producer. Hey, a rare carry by somebody else John other Oshaw. than Creighton. And he gets three yards. I have to go look at my roster now. Yeah, look at your two deeps. That's uh, John Allstott. That's a great name. Yeah. And, uh, Mike Allstott, who went to Purdue. Whistle stop play. We've got a timeout on the field by Aurora, 203 to go in the third, 35-23. Calling officials cheaters or corrupt? It's not a game. Insulting referees? It's not a game. Threatening officials? It's not a game. Berating young umpires, learning the ropes, it's not a game. It's violent language in the stands, it's not a game. Verbal abuse from the sideline, it's not a game. Screaming at a referee in the parking lot, it's not a game. Back here, once again at Franklin, the ball was completed to the receiver, Boland on the near side. Once he made an extra attempt to gain yardage, he fumbles the football, and Franklin takes over. They'll have it first and 10. Now let's take a look at the replay there. Keith got replaced. What's his name? Teddy. How you doing, man? Good. Good to have you in the broadcast. Stay nice and close to that microphone. If you work your cards out right, Teddy, Keith won't be back. You will be. All right. All right, first and ten now for the Grizzlies. First turnover of the day now for Aurora. Kai Ross 
We'll have Jennings in the backfield and Jennings nice run across the 10 out to about the 13 yard line. You jump in anytime you want to make a comment. Nothing will surprise me what you say because I've worked with Keith for so long. Yeah, everything's got to be above R rated, okay? Trips to the right. Second down and four. Here's Jennings trying to cut the edge, and he's driven out of bounds here on the near side. I know it's hard to think of something to say sometimes, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. You know what we say, if you don't have anything good to say, don't say anything at all. Yeah. yeah we try to keep Third Keith in that realm, game. too. Third down and short. After that big turnover, McKinney, the lone receiver to the near side. Malachi Joy, the lone receiver to the right. Now the work out of the I formation. We haven't seen much of this. In fact, might be the first time this year. Hand off Jennings, and Jennings didn't get there. Even with a lead fullback, they're unable to get the first down, and boy, just like that, it is fourth down. Pretty cool. Well, it was a dive, so. A dive that uh, went nowhere, huh? Yeah. All right, so after the turnover, nothing there for Franklin on offense. You know, we just don't let Keith push you around, okay? All right. You just tell him when you're ready to give it up. All right. Low snap. Here they come, and that one barely gets over the line of scrimmage. As you see, Matino let that one go out of bounds, took a nice Franklin roll at around the 43-yard line. It'll be first and 10. Big turnover once again for Aurora, but then nothing there for Franklin on offense. So what, uh, you play football? Yeah, I do. Where at? Uh, Franklin Schools. Franklin Schools. You enjoying it? Yeah, it's pretty fun. What position do you play? Quarterback. Quarterback, very good. So one day at Franklin, you'll be a, what is the Franklin's uh, mascot in high school. Grizzly bear. Oh, they're the Grizzly Bears. One day we'll see a quarterback. First down here for Luando, and he gets the cutback and getting yardage. I'll tell you what, tackling is really not very good today. All the way to the 35, but did he fumble it again, or did they say it was down? The back judge making the call, second fumble and another turnover, and Franklin gets it back again. Hayden Kermode there on the recovery. That's going to do it for the end of period number three. We'll head to the four, 35-23 Aurora. All right. Warehousing to transportation and everything in between, Piper Logistics does it all. Centrally located, Piper Logistics has two warehouses in Indianapolis and a warehouse in Cincinnati, Ohio. Piper Logistics houses over 1 million square feet. Along with our transportation department, we can provide service to half the United States markets. We encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Indiana SRN. Hit the bell to get notifications for upcoming games and more. Watch as many games as you want, as many times as you want. Back here at Franklin College as we head to the fourth quarter. Back-to-back -back turnovers for the Spartans and... Now the question is, can Franklin get something out of it? They did not get anything in that last turnover. They'll take over here. Nose of the football at the 35-yard line. Ross to throw. Has a man deep, and a sliding catch made by Spencer Wright. What a great catch. How about Wright going to the cone and then raised his hand, got the open pick. Look at this. He goes right to that cone. That's a nice catch. Well, that's an excellent 
concentration. Trips right, first down. Jennings will stay in as the lone setback, and Jennings will get the call. Ran into a bevy of bodies right there, and he just got to the line of scrimmage before being down. So how did Teddy do? Good? Yeah, he's yeah. Uh, he's on for the next home game we have. The you, homecoming you, game? Yeah, you get to stay home. I, I can't. Yeah, okay. yeah. By Teddy, the way, you don't get paid for that day either. You know, Teddy is a quarterback. Yeah, we talked Good about ball. that. Yeah. Good ball player. He takes his athletic ability from, from his, his dad. mother. No. Oh, his dad. Oh, no, his mom. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, I, Usually your I line blew that is, joke, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, you blew that one big yeah. time. Sorry. I kind of I, I kind of like Lance. Lance is a good guy. Yeah. We doing some Franklin baseball this year? Uh, yes. Handoff core who enters the lineup, gain of a yard or so, maybe two. You know, we keep doing this. Teddy will probably be playing <laughs> football for Franklin. Yeah. Well, he already mentioned it. He'll be playing for the high school. So one day he's a seventh grader now. Think about it. In a couple of years, he'll be a freshman, and then here we go. He'll look back on that short broadcasting career and, and said, "Thank goodness I didn't choose that." Yeah. Four receivers now for Ross. Puts it in the air and oh! in and out of the hands nice. of his intended receiver. That was Dylan McKinney. Nice defense because he had that ball. That was Robbie Peterson, step for step. You got to go for this, don't you? I do. Yeah, okay. you, you you run out of time now. This will be the second straight time. If by chance Aurora gets the stop here, that's two scores potentially taken away from Franklin. You to put another 14 points on the board, you might have had the lead after mm. those two turnovers. Fourth and long. You have to get to the 25. Ross, sideline, ball oh! caught, and what a reception. That was maybe the catch of the day made by number 85. Let's see who that was and on that reception. I didn't see, they don't have an 85 on my roster. Unless that was... Matt Neely, number 84. But I have Owen any... Wright. Owen Wright. So uh, Owen Wright. Okay. Nice catch, Owen. So Owen Wright makes the catch of the day, saves Franklin right there. Here's Cora left side, but a holding. Boy, that was a late hold. That came, that flag came out after he passed everyone, which that's where the, that was where the hole was. And that's where they catch you. The hole got big because you held. Would you ever think that maybe had a hard time getting it out of his? I never had a hard time getting out my four flag. Well, I understand a story that you had one time. You didn't blow the whistle at all. I did not. And that was a basketball game. Yeah. You just let him play. Larry Gwynn, I love you. Larry will never forget that day. I bet, I bet he won't. <laughs> Center Grove, sixth grade girls will never forget that day either. <laughs> That's why a lot of them didn't get into officiating either. Trips right after the holding penalty, moves the football back to the 34-yard line. Ross looking to his right and overthrows. Double coverage on that one. Dawson DeLapp, the intended target. DeLapp, the intended receiver, but he had two defensive backs right on him right there. Second down. Tell you one thing for sure. Franklin is earning everything they're getting. After that first turnover, they had to give the football away to get it back again. That big holding penalty a couple of moments ago. It just nothing has come easy. Second down and 10. Ross to throw this time, and with this one up for grabs, but the reception is made inside the 20-yard line. Gray and another great catch. I tell you what, that was dual possession until he hit the ground. Look at this. Look at how he brings this ball in, Troy. That's Derek Thompson again, another big reception. That's great. Quickly to the line of scrimmage. Ross throws near side. Nobody's there but a flag. In fact, two flags are down. I think you can take your pick, either one of those two defensive backs for Aurora. Both officials now coming to field judge and a back judge. Well, you get a score here, and all of a sudden it's 
35-30. This is a completely different ball game all of a sudden. So this is a really maybe the possession of the game so far for Franklin. They're going to get a first down out of this because of the interference penalty. I like that they take their time to get this right. There's our back judge. <laughs> yeah, one fan doesn't care yeah, for it. No, they, they don't like to delay. <laughs> well, I think, again, they could have taken their pick, either one of the two players. That's half the distance because it's a 15, or did they? Yeah, that's half a distance. So the ball's at the five. It is at the five yard line. Ross, handoff up the middle, Cora, and he might get a yard or so. I see a pair making One thing for sure, the inside, that interior defense for Aurora, you heard the name Isaiah Perrin. They've done a great job Boy. stopping that inside run. Well, I tell you what, he was eating them up the first half. Yeah. yeah. Cora stays in. Second down and goal. Looking to throw near side, and is that one incomplete? It is. Franklin Crowd wanted a penalty flag. I don't see one down anywhere. Peterson Again, on coverage. I think the feet, feet got tangled. If it's tangled feet, they just uh, they just let that go, don't they? Yeah. So this is a big third down here. Dylan McKinney was the targeted receiver on that pass play. So now third and goal. The work out of the I formation. We saw this earlier. The pitch, Cora, outside, cut, touchdown. Four-yard run. And Franklin in it. trails it by six. They're, they are in this thing. They take advantage of the turnover. How That's about this one-on-one -on -one move? Did you see that? Yeah. A little shake and bake there. And I like the play call. Aggressive, too. Yeah. Very aggressive. So after two straight turnovers, the Grizzlies will get seven out of this one. 11-19 remaining, 35-30, your score. This is Brittany. A little thing I love about the Egg White Grill is the toasty English muffin. It's toasted perfectly. It's just a little crispy, but not like hard crispy, but just crispy enough that when you bite into it, everything is perfect. <laughs> My name is Curtis, and I love the egg white grill because the egg itself, it's like soft and fluffy, like a pillow. I, and I, and I, I would eat my pillow, but I'd eat <laughs> the, the Chick-fil-A breakfast egg white sandwich for sure. They say nice guys don't finish first. So maybe it's time to reconsider what it means to be first. It's about being your best, but knowing you could be even better. It's being present. Well, respectful of history. You sure you want to make that move? It's donating something more valuable than money. It's believing in yourself. It's something bigger. It's coming from different families, but treating each other like brothers. It's not just being a man. It's being a mason. We're ready for the kickoff. We got the replay coming. Are, are I got the replay. No, no, you got it. I got it? Yeah, I got the replay coming. No. All right, very All right. good. All right, here we go. Franklin right in this football game. 11-19 remaining. That kick will sail into the end zone. Uh, all right. Here's the touchdown. All right. This is called uh-oh because I tell you what, we got a ball game for you. The word of the first half was uh-oh because uh -oh. we had big play after big play. Our big play – Count is still at 11, Troy. I know it's been a while. I feel like we're in a drought. But the key is now for this Franklin defense, don't give up the big play. And now the crowd that they did not want to get in the game is in the game. They are. Most of the fans have hung around. Number 20, Aurora. Trying to hold on here. Creighton is not in the lineup. Four receivers. The throw. Ball caught across the 35, 
That'll be Michael Boland on the reception. And let's see where they place the football at the 38-yard line. You cannot allow them to score. And you need probably the ball back with, what, six? At least. Allstott stays in the lineup. They'll throw again. In route, ball caught down at the 49-yard line. That's going to be Ty Pruitt on the reception. They'll actually give it to him at the 50. To Marion Newell making the stop for the Graves. Pass They'll give Newell credit Pruitt. for the tackle. Just like that, you're at midfield. First and ten for the Got the free substitution the coming side. in now. So Franklin can replace, but did not. Odo gets oh, hit from my. the right. Big time sack back to the 42-yard line. How about Riddick Bolton? He shot in there like a rocket. My goodness, what a hit. This That kid is a sophomore. There it is. Wow. Well, I think Luando thought he was going to make a break to the right, but that was so quick. Hello. Second down and long. Here comes the pressure. Screen pass. All stop. 45. And he's going to get dumped even before he got to the original line of scrimmage. They'll put him back to the 48 yard line. And it's third and long. We have not seen Creighton in a while. Allstott is out. Matino is in. Empty backfield now for Luando. Going to keep it himself. At the 45, he will not get the first down as he is knocked out of bounds here in the near sideline. We're only going to place it at the 43. He's got uh, three more yards. It'll be fourth and three. They're going to go for it. How about this call, huh? This is big. 9.03 to go. Trips left. Trips right, empty backfield, here comes the blitz. Gets rid of it quickly, incomplete pass. Excellent defensive play by Michael Loper to knock it down and Franklin gets it back. They can tie this ball game. How about that stop? That gets uh, fired up. Pretty cut, pretty awesome. By the way, we have had 963 yards of total offense here this afternoon. That's just great defense. What do you think coach is down there going? This is it. This is the drive. Yeah, I mean, this, this is, is the drive here. You, you had no life there for a while. You've given up some big plays, but all of a sudden now you're right back in it. Chance to tie, or if you go for two to take the lead. Franklin takes over at the 43. Play action again. Ross over the middle, tipped in the air and almost intercepted. Oh, that was so close. Well, they score, Troy. They they have the lead at 36-35. Ben Slatkoff out of Valpo. Yeah, you're right, 36-35. Slatkoff on the coverage. My math is not very good today. Well, it's at Wyoming graduation. It is. Second down and 10. Handoff. Here's Cora. Hard hit, driven out of bounds by Peterson. Big third down here. Who would have thought at one point that Franklin would be? They were almost dead, yeah. right? I yeah. mean, at halftime, it's 35 17. On their own 45 yard line. And well, they, came, they came on the field looking like not good, but. Well, and here's the other thing Aurora really has not played as well offensively thanks to that Franklin defense, but then they had those two big turnovers. And Franklin now with a big third down right here. Ross releases. Ball caught and then dropped. Malachi Joy had it in his hands. Couldn't hold on. It would have been shy of a first down. So now you got to punt it away and back the pressure to your defense. Yeah. 
You want to let me know, and or I'll let you know when we go past a thousand yards. Yes, sir. When's the last time you had a thousand yard game? I have not had one. I don't think I have either. Nine hundred and sixty-five now. Fourth down and long, low snap. Only three rushers and a line drive wobbly kick. There will be a return inside the 20. Martino will get to maybe the 23. It'll be first down and 10. Luando has not. Again, we haven't stressed this enough. They had 28 points in the first quarter. They had seven in the second. They did not score in the third. They had two turnovers now in the second half. This offense just looked completely different. Well, I think a lot of it is the the changes that the defensive coordinator made on the sideline in between those because they 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 had developed they changed during the game. Yeah. Which you need to do. That's why they have half times. So they can make the adjustments. I tell you what, this crowd has helped them too get back into the ballgame. And we have not seen Creighton either, so the running attack has been hurt a little bit. Quick out, ball caught 35, driven out of bounds on the far side. That'll be Michael Boland on the reception, but he'll be driven out at about the 42, but good enough for a first down. We, we don't know why Creighton is not playing. But he was a... He was a factor. Big time factor. I do not see him on the sidelines yet. There he is. He's over on the bench, but doesn't appear to be hurt. Pumping, throwing. Luando misses that one long, but there's a flag. Came from behind. Penalty flag on the field. See, I see Creighton walking, but again, there's no evidence that he's hurt as he stands by himself on the sidelines for Aurora. Let's see what this penalty is. Holding. Now they got holding on oh. the defense. Okay. It's going to be a first down. Yep. Seven thirty-two. Still a lot of oh, a lot of time football to be played, but I think you need really need to give stop here. You don't want to give up anything to Aurora at this point, this late in the ball game. on the Grizzly forty-eight yard line. Connor Bright back in the ball game. One of the two receivers to the left. All stop will stay in as the lone setback. I think without. Creighton in, this offense is a little bit different. Is the dynamic isn't fully there. Here's Allstott, sweep to the right side. Picks up a good chunk of yardage, drop near the 40 yard line. I like him, uh, he's a nice little runner. Wish I had his hair. Yeah, me too. Look at that, look at those locks. He's already been named to the all hair team as we had one last week. Last week we forget the, the you know, we have an all-everything all, all everything team. We should. We should we start should. an all-name team, all-hair team. We'll start keeping track. We'll do that. Second down and short. Allstott stays in. Luando to throw. Takes it himself. Breaks a tackler to. Gets the first down inside the 35. And a late oh, flag. no. Flag came in from the back judge on the far side. This might be a face mask. Player hurt now for Franklin as well. By the way, Hayden Kermode is the one who was hurt there for Franklin. Here's the replay. There's. Yep, there oh, it is. Oh, yeah. Big time. That's a good call. Now, 649. Do you you don't want to score too quick? Yeah, but if I score now, it doesn't matter too much because then all of a sudden I'm up, what, 42 to 30. It's a two-score game again. This is really big here for Franklin. Want to at least hold him to a field goal. Then you can get perhaps a touchdown and a two-point conversion. Luando to throw now releases in over the outstretched arms of his intended receiver inside the 10-yard line. If he makes the catch, 
That is another first down as Pruitt can't come up with it. Second down. Nice thing here for Franklin that that will stop the clock at 6.30. It turned out to be a pretty nice day. It was a cloudy morning, first yeah. half, and yeah. sun Beat came it. out. Trips left, second down and long. Luando to throw oh, he's again. wide open. Yep, knocked down, though. Jairo Ojada's right there. He got those long arms up. He didn't take the ball fake, did he? No. Not at all. Well, here we go, Troy. Yep, big third down play. Aurora, third down. Got to hold him to no more than three. Luando to the end zone, in and out of the hands of Madsen, incomplete. And it's going to be fourth flag. down, but a flag is down. Back at the 22-yard line. It's a hold, I believe. It's going to go against Aurora. I can tell by the reaction of one of their players. Yep. You got to go for three here, right? Quinn. Don't you? Offense, number 59. Well, I, you know what? I think you do, number but the here in. comes the field goal unit on. You got to watch for the fake here. Boy, that is just a great defense there by the deep DBs. Football again. Placed at the 17 yard line. Listen to the crowd. Heilick from 35. Good snap. The kick is on the way, and it is good. Big field goal there for Aurora. 6 17 remaining. 38 30 is your score. Warehousing to transportation and everything in between, Piper Logistics does it all. Centrally located, Piper Logistics has two warehouses in Indianapolis and a warehouse in Cincinnati, Ohio. Piper Logistics houses over 1 million square feet. Along with our transportation department, we can provide service to half the United States markets. We encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Indiana SRN. Hit the bell to get notifications for upcoming games and more. Watch as many games as you want, as many times as you want. Well, just over six minutes to go. Here's crunch time here. So. Crowd is in it. Yeah. You're down eight. I mean... For how this game started to where it is now. Night and day. Nice job. Come on, Franklin. So the Grizzlies will get it back as that will oh, go that's, out of bounds. Look at that. Well, Aurora not looking like a top 20 team of late. Well, I think it's because Franklin's has stepped up. Yeah. They certainly have. But now, the offense will take the football at the 35-yard line with six minutes remaining. Now, again, if they score a touchdown, they're going to have to go for two. We'll find out right here, Kai Ross. He has set back his Cora. Trips left. Ross, quick hitter, ball caught at the 40. Gain of about six on the pass play. By the way, number six, Derek Thompson again. We've called his name quite a bit today. Second down and three. We actually give him seven yards on that last pass play. We've now surpassed 1,000 total yards here this afternoon combined. Ross near side, ball caught, cut back, looking for running room, flag is down. That'll be Malachi Joy. Malachi Joy on the carry. Now we have to sort this one out. 
Football is at about the 41-yard line. Did you see anything on that? I didn't. Now they move it up to the 42. It's going to go against Franklin, looks like. Oh. Holding penalty on number six, which is Derek Thompson. Thompson shaking his head. That wasn't me. So it'll be second down. Keep an eye on that clock. 537 and counting. Ross will work with four receivers. Here comes the rush from the back. He takes a big hit, got rid of it in time. Cora makes the catch. Gets out of bounds here in the near side, 35-yard line. I'll tell you what, Ross took a big-time shot. Yeah, he did. Not nope. sure how he got up. Definitely a blank slide hit. Otis Watts is the one who nailed him. Watts, this time, he was on the right side of that defense. Now he's on the left side. And you see Aurora playing more with a three-man front, so they've added an extra defensive back. Third down. They've got to get to the 45. Ross over the middle. Ball caught. Oh, my. Another big catch by Dylan McKinney. That's, the, that's around four defenders. Yeah. I mean, that, that's, a, that's a rope. McKinney putting his name in the hat for our impact player of the game. Couple of touchdowns here this afternoon. First down, Ross behind the receiver. It was intended for his tight end, Thompson. Look at this play. There's four defenders right there. There's Here comes the ball. Yeah. I mean, that's great. <laughs> Heck of a pass. Second down. Clock stopped at uh, 445. Alma leads Manchester early 7-0. Second half of our double header. Corey in motion. Whistles will stop the play. Looks Tennessee like we Flyers have motion against Franklin. False start. Offense. Say false start. Boy, and the one thing you don't want to have happen here is get some penalties that are keep moving you back. Need to play some mistake-free football. So the football back at the 44-yard line. Second down. They'll have to get to the 41 for a first down. That's a lot of real estate to get in a couple of plays. Ross steps up. Got hit from behind. The ball comes loose. And will it be a fumble? And if they rule it, it's going to be a turnover. It was Otis Watts who come in, came in from that left side, and Otis as Watts Ross came recovery. back, the ball stripped out of his hands, and that's a big turnover. Mm. Wow, that's tough right there. That is a tough play. And, you know, in fairness for the officials, you got to call that right away. Yeah. I mean, is that an open hand? Is that a close hand? That's a tough play. Now your defense has to step up because now you got to make a stop with yeah. four minutes. Yeah, that, that clock is, well, turnover's been big here in the second half. Two there by Aurora, and then that one by the Grizzlies. Oh, look at that diving, <laughs> diving tackle. The carry by 23. See if that was Andre Johnson. making the stop for the Grizz. Take that back. 23 is actually Matino, James Matino. Second down after a gain of one. All start on the carry. Nice hole. 20, 15, still on his feet and bulling his way. He's refusing to go down until they got to the 12 yard line. I just wonder if he's any relation. Where was Mike Allstott from? Um, he played for Purdue. I know, but where was he from? I'm not sure. Because uh, this young man is from Aurora, Illinois. Well, that young man right there <laughs> earned his 
earned his stripes. 200 pounder. First down. Dynamic of the game changed again. Oh, oh boy, look out. Well, he got mugged. Ojada there again. And there was nowhere to go for Luando. He might want to turn the other way next time. I mean, it's just simply almost unfair. He almost got blocked into it. Yeah. Mm. Second down. Second down and long. They can get a first down if they can get it to the about the two-yard line. Luando to throw. Does so. Ball caught at the 10-yard line and finally brought down. It'll be short of a first down. Marion Newell making the stop for the grid. Best completion so now Bolin. they'll say the catch by Boland. Third well, they down. Gave, they gave him three yards of uh... two and a half minutes. Here's a chance for your defense. Get a stop. Third down. All stout will stay in as the lone setback. Trips right. They're looking at the sidelines. Lawando wants to make sure they're getting the right play here. All stop. The carry breaks one tackle, two tackles inside the five. Dives ahead. Touchdown from yeah, nine yards down. out by All Stott. He he's 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 the factor in the second half. Yeah. Especially here in the fourth quarter, a player down there for Aurora. That is Anthony Salas. Just a reminder, fans, please help us keep our safety. Well, that, that your probably your puts a nail in the coffin facility. in this one Thank with you. a 14-point lead chance to go up by 15. And, boy, Franklin had an opportunity. They had a chance even to take the lead here late, but could not do so. We'll be naming the impact player of the game in this one this afternoon. One thing for sure that if you have to look at impact player, impact player, and we, we do it for either team. It yep. doesn't have to be for the winning team. And we're still looking for a sponsor for that impact exactly. player. If you'd like to sponsor that, contact me at coach at Indiana SRN. Hey, you get your name mentioned on the whole entire fourth quarter. You get to be on the pregame show. And if you're really, really nice, maybe we even give you a thank you. Really? Yeah. Well, you're we definitely give you a thank you're, you. Well, you're such a sweetheart as I, it is. I, I'm a nice so. man. Just ask me. So the extra point attempt and the crowd really quieted here after that last score. Good snap. The kick is up. It is good by Heilich. Matthew Heilich. 2.02 to here. go. 45-30. here with 2.02 to play. I want to thank Chuck Levine, our director, Daniel Thacker, our camera guy, Sticks is up there today as well, Franklin Athletic Department and the Touchdown Club, and just the staff, period, in the uh, press box. Thank you so much for your effort for us, and we'll be back at homecoming at Troy, the impact player today. Uh, we'll announce it after the kickoff here. All right, we'll do that. Good effort by Franklin just to get back into this ball game. They were down by possession, chance to take the lead, but unfortunately they will not get it done here this afternoon as Carter Edney, or is that Mitch Elfrish? Elfrish actually on the return, duplicate numbers here this afternoon. The impact player of the game has to be Creighton. 
for Aurora on the day. He only carried the football 11 times, 241 yards, four touchdowns. He averaged 21.9 yards per carry. Mm. That's the impact he had, including that 91 yarder to begin the ball game. Franklin next week will be up at trying. That game will not be on the Franklin or the HCAC network, but you can watch that game from their from the trying network, yeah. Yep. But we will be back the next week as it's homecoming week at uh, against Bluffton. Wright makes the catch there for the first down. Wright again, this time in and out of his hands. Knocked away there by Peterson. We need to get uh, Chuck down here and uh, Daniel down here early so they can work on the float. Our, Our annual float now yep. in the homecoming parade. Yeah. Beautiful float last year. Was it? Yeah. Well, he can go to Evansville and come back yeah, here. Yeah, I think so. He's got plenty of time. Yeah. It's only a, well, a three hour drive. Ross catches his man at the 30 and dropped inside the 20. Catch made by Dylan McKinney. That's beautiful. They have not given up. No. And they did that last week. Hats off to your coaching staff. Good players never quit. Well, one thing about this, if they can score here. They got time. Yeah. And you're going to need the two-point conversion, of course. Ross to throw. Ball caught down to about the 10-yard line. Look at the offense Dallas. running. They well, believe they, they could get it done. Well, they need to got. They really got to hurry here. Minute 10. And before the play is off, we've got a whistle and stoppage of play. Aurora timeout. Yep. So we've got a timeout by Aurora. 45-30. Spartans with the lead. You're good at making big announcements. We're having a go! <laughs> We're good at your insurance. Start with Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, online, over the phone, or in person, and stop knocking on wood. We encourage you to follow us on Twitter, at IndianaSRN. Find upcoming games, video highlights, and much more. Follow us now at Indiana SRN. We encourage you to follow us on Twitter at Indiana SRN. Find upcoming games, video highlights, and much more. Follow us now at Indiana SRN. 109 remaining following the Aurora timeout. Trips left. Ross over the middle. Ball's going to be caught. That's going to be Thompson, the tight end, trying to get extra yardage. He's going to be kept in bounds. Gets the first down, though. Got the first down. Franklin again in their hurry up offense. Under a minute to go. Mm. Can't waste a whole lot of time right here as they're checking at the line of scrimmage. Got to get going. Trips to the near side. Ross. Rolling right, RPO, looking, Got throws him. it away. No. Well, he saw his receivers were covered. The good news is he stopped the clock. Bad news is I think they ran off about an extra 14 seconds. Whatever they do. Got a penalty here. Oh, I did not see the flag. So it's going to go against Franklin. Yeah, it's an illegal formation. The The tight end was covered. Yeah, good call. By the way, I misspoke off the air. 1,109 yards of total offense here today. Is that all? That's all. Just think, that's how many trips up and down the field. That's the sprint you have to do afterwards. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, okay, come pick me up Tuesday. Ross looking left and throws it and intercepted. Oh, that's going to do it. Peterson comes up with the interception. That was triple coverage to that side. They were looking for McKinney. So that's going to wrap this one up.
So a big turnover here late. And sometimes that happens when you're really trying to hurry to get the play off. But Franklin, great effort today. They will fall to 0-2 on the season, head to Trine coming up next week. Aurora will go to 2-0. As we said earlier, they had to battle. It was a six-point ball game late in this one. I tell you what, folks, though, this Franklin Ball Club, it, they're fun to watch. Yeah. Come out to homecoming now on the, against Bluffton. It's nice to see Bluffton has to make that long road trip, huh? It is a long road trip. Yeah. Conference play starts today. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Again, thanks to Chuck, thanks to Daniel, thanks to Sticks, and thanks to you for listening and watching. If you have any questions or comments, good or bad, please contact us at coach at indianasrn.org. Great ball game. But you really only take the good comments, right? No, I'll take them all. Uh, we, want, <laughs> we, want to do, we want to do a great job uh, for this league and for this, for this community. All right. Final score once again, Aurora 45. Franklin 30, that will do it. Again, thanks to the entire crew, thanks to you. We'll see you next time right here on HCAC TV, powered by Indiana SRN. Don't forget now the second half of our doubleheader, you can click on it right away, Manchester. Bye, everybody. <laughs>